Uh, an interview coming up with Mr. Lama. Waiting for him to sit down. Okay, but. Okay. All right, welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2016. I am Darkman78, and with me is our Diablo 2 runner, Mr. Lama SC. Welcome. Thanks Hi, for uh, thank taking you. the time to interview with us. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess quick thoughts. How do you feel about that run? Uh, I mean, 144 is definitely a good time. Um, I was probably averaging around like a 147, 148 through all of my like practice runs. Uh, with Diablo 2, you just have a lot of RNG. Yeah. I mean, that's always been it, right? Yeah. So, like I was saying, I got the runes early or in, in a good enough time mm -hmm. where I was only level 12 when mm -hmm. I was leaving. Um, I had experienced shrines to kind of help me through with that stuff. Uh, and the maps weren't too bad. You know, sometimes you just get maps that are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. terrible and you're just having to, even though you know where the exit's supposed to be, mm -hmm. you just have to keep trying different paths. Sure. So overall, I felt pretty good about it. Good. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy with that time. Good. I mean, was, with, with a run like Diablo 2, with the fact that there's just so much involved in it, you just really don't know what to expect. Does that, I guess, kind of put more pressure on you, or does it kind of make you feel more nervous? Or, I guess, has it gotten to the point where, you know what, I know what I need to do? Um, I'd say both. Mm -hmm. um, at a GDQ, I think it puts a little pressure, because if I run into that Black Marsh and it's a river map, I can't, re you know, I'm not resetting, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I have to just take that time lost. There's nothing I can do. Um, but, but through general runs and stuff, I think it kind of adds excitement, actually, and it's something that's kept me really interested sure. in the game, mm -hmm. uh, that and all the different characters, in that so many strategies, and, and every time you really have to kind of be thinking and focusing on when something happens, right? Oh, this map is different. I, I need to focus on which ways I need to go. Or, oh, I found this item. Should I use this item mm -hmm. instead of that item? Sure. Whatever yeah. it is. Um, so, I, so I think that adds a lot of fun to the game, mm -hmm. uh, for me at least, instead yeah. of running, you right. know, a run that's just the same run over and over, sure. um, which I think also has a lot of fun and value, mm -hmm. and it adds consistency, so <laughs> you know. Um, but the disappointing thing is you can be on like a world record pace run, and then you get to bail and he drops like nine clones, <laughs> and it's like you keep, you keep despawning it, you come back, yeah. he clones again, you despawn, he clones again, and then you can lose it, right, you know. What so, can you do? Yeah, so... <laughs> You know, there's always things like that, though, I feel like. All right. So, I mean, how do you manage? I mean, for all of us, I'm sure there's so many watching right now. That they've loved Diablo 2. They played it so many times back in the day. Yep. How do you manage just knowing, like, all of the items that are there and knowing, okay, this item's going to be good for me. No, this item necessarily isn't going to be good be good for me. I mean, not only do we talk about the hundreds of uniques that they have, but we're talking about, you know, the white items, you know, just even like, you know, a socketed item that you right. know you're going to need, or maybe like, you know, just magic items. Like, how do you juggle knowing all of that? That just comes with experience, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you slowly kind of learn just over and over of playing through. Mm -hmm. So initially when you're starting out, I mean, you're, you're told, you know, we say the, the most important things, get your stealth armor, get your leaf staff, get your fire resist helm if you can, you know, mm -hmm. put some morales in it, whatever it is. Things like looking for resistances are always good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to want cold resist, fire resist, light resist, because those are some of the main damages that I'm taking. Mm -hmm. um, you learn that defense doesn't become that important, so you don't really care about as much like armors and stuff if they don't have specific things. Um, but as you go through the game, you start learning things like, oh, this cannot be frozen item is really good. Right. But I can't, I can't use it because I'd have to sacrifice something that's more important. Sure. Right. Sure. Um, so, so you start doing this just juggling. Uh, and you experiment a lot, honestly. Sometimes you put it on and you mm -hmm. play through and you go, well, it wasn't worth it because I lost time because I was right. running too slow without my fast run walk armor or whatever it is. Sure. Um, so there's still, I mean, there's still a lot of stuff that we kind of experiment with uh, day to day. Um, but as for all the like uniques and things like that, um, you just kind of learn what every item is or what every item does at least. Mm -hmm. So when I see a unique volts drop, I don't even pick it up, you know, because it's something that I'm like, it's right. worthless. I'm not, I'm right. not going to touch it. Right. Um, as opposed to if I see, you know, a unique scale mail drop, I might pick that up because that has cannot be frozen and some faster run walk on sure. it. And that could be really useful at the end game for like a barbarian or something. Sure. So every, every class has different items and mm -hmm. you just kind of learn it as you go, yeah. play around. All right. So, I mean, you did, you did do the uh, Sorceress run, of course, at AGDQ 16. Yep. What do you think is more nerve-wracking, this one or the Sorceress run? Um, I'd say the Sorceress. The, the Druid is one of the easier runs. Mm -hmm. um, Sorceress, and, and, I th and I think it's also... Uh, the Druid's a little easier, and so it makes it a little bit less 
technical like talk through. Like mm -hmm. with a sorceress, it's like I'm trying to explain, you know, I go in, I teleport in, frost nova really quick, get some statics, hit some novas to right. stun, all mm -hmm. these things. With Druid, you go in, you drop fissure, and things just melt. Um, so I think it's a little less nerve-wracking in that regard, mm -hmm. uh, but a little more nerve-wracking in terms of like maps sure. become a little bit more dependent right. on those. Because mm -hmm. uh, Sorceress, Act 3, 4, 5, you're teleporting. So it's like, oh, you have a block, you just teleport right past it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's monsters there, it doesn't matter, you just go past them. All right. Um, but for the Druid, you have to go through it, right? Sure. You have to run around <laughs> it, you have to go through the monster pack, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, so, so I think those are... Uh, are kind of pieces. So they each have their own nerve racks uh, or nerve racking parts. But sure. I would say the sorceress was a little more nerve racking, maybe because it was my first time as well. Sure. Okay, so tell me, that chain armor you're wearing right now, yeah. is it really hot? Not hot, but it is heavy. <laughs> okay. It's uh, 30 pounds. Oh. And, uh, and I just, I just kind of got used to wearing it. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, I, I thought it would be fun one day, and so I just kind of wore it. And the first time I actually wore it, I wore it for like three, four hours. And I started getting kind of double vision playing, and I was like, I, oh. should, pro I should probably take it off. Like, it's <laughs> pro probably not a good idea no. to keep wearing this for, for that long. Um, but, you know, you just build up to it. And sure. so now it's just like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm used to wearing it. It's not bad. <laughs> All right. So I guess the final question. Sure. How did you get the name? Um, so when I was a child, <laughs> as I'm sure many of you guys have had uh, happen, but when I was like, eight years old, nine years old, whatever it was, we learned the word llama in school. And it has two L's, and I was like, that's not real, like, that doesn't make a word. You know, like, it can't be real. Um, and then I like, looked it up, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh, it is. And then, like, a couple days later, I was playing Neopets, which everybody played at eight years old, <laughs> greatest game ever, and at 18, and of course. 25, and yeah. you still play. Yeah. Um, but but I, I had to decide if I was, like, what my account name was gonna be. And I tried, you know, like, Alex or whatever, my, you know, just the basic name stuff and all that was taken. And so I was like, oh, llama is a cool word. <laughs> so I put llama, it was taken. So I was like, Mr. Llama? Wasn't taken, kept it, went with it. Nice. Kept it all the way through. So, so I don't know. I guess I'm not very original beyond that. Or not, I'm not very creative, but. Hey, you stuck with it. <laughs> yeah, stick with it, right? So wait, what's the SC then? Is that for softcore? Or? Uh, that's for StarCraft. Oh, so StarCraft. I used to do StarCraft casting and playing and, and coaching and ah, all that stuff. Um, makes sense. So yeah, so I just kept it on. Cool. All right. Well, I believe that's all the questions I have. So thank you very much, Mr. Lama. We do appreciate it. For sure. Great run. Thank you. Um, so are you coming? Okay. And uh, with me right here, so we're going to have, uh, we're having Scent come in. Um, so, Sen? All right. Sen, as always, our prize guru from uh, Games Done Quick. Sen, thanks yeah. for being here. Yeah, Dark Man, always nice to be here. Mama, wonderful run. Thank you very much. You know, I, I have a quick question for you, if you don't mind. Sure. So, when is the, uh, the acclaimed eight player Diablo 2 speedrun happening? Ooh, right. So, like Teo said in one of his donations, he was saying maybe we'll have a race uh, or something coming up uh, at HAQ 2017. That could be something fun. No. Um, but, but I actually did an eight player. This past Sunday, and it took about four and a half hours or so. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't too bad. It was all the way through hell, um, but it was a lot of fun. So I'd love to bring one here someday, though. That would be uh, that'd be pretty fun. It's a pretty cool run when everybody's just going through crazy, I'm, and you I'm, can get it down to two and a half, three hours. I'm, I'm sure it is. So. Real quick, I just want to talk about some of the prizes we're going to have coming up during our, uh, our Pokemon Black, Pokemon Red. And if you guys uh, want to see it and get your donations in Pokemon Blue right after, uh, we have this lovely Pokemon Needlepoint you see right in front of me here, Pikachu, kind of reminiscent of uh, Pokemon Yellow there. You know, yep. the Pokemon version I don't think a lot of us played because we already had Red and Blue, and this one just had a Pikachu that I was a you. yellow player. Uh, oh, sorry, all right. there you go. Uh, near near right, to his yeah. heart. <laughs> already disproven. <laughs> <laughs> These might be uh, just a little bit hard to see on on camera at, at this distance, but um, these are uh, little rolled painted Pokemon figures. Uh, we have all three of the original starters here, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. Um, they're fully 3D painted. They, they look absolutely adorable. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, and it looks like we're zooming in on them. Cute. There you go. <laughs> well, there we go. We also have uh, some pins of one of my favorite Pokemon, Eevee, and uh, all of the Eeveelutions oh, yeah. um, in both normal and, and shiny forms. So, nice. hey, you know, you love Eevee? Awesome. 
uh, Darkman, actually, right in front of you, uh, there's a book there, if you wouldn't mind propping that up for me. This one right here? Is that, is, that is correct. All right. That is uh, The Field Guide to Canto by our own uh, Kari Fry. It contains um, wonderful illustrations and musings on uh, the first 151 Pokemon. Uh, you know, my, my favorite generation. I don't, I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Grew up with Definitely. it. Definitely. Well, there's wonderful illustrations in there. Great, great book. And uh, you know, know speaking of Kari Fry and her illustrations, we have uh, a set of posters here showing the, uh, the first three starters. Sen. Oh. <laughs> I, not only do I not know how to shirt, I don't know how to poster. It's, it's directions are hard for me. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> and, anyway, these are beautiful, and they're going off together as a set. So uh, make sure to get your donations in during Pokemon Red, and make sure to get your donations in for Pokemon Blue. All right, these posters look really cool. Yeah, okay, they do. Do you know how much it costs to donate to get these? Uh, I believe they are uh, $15 minimum donation during Pokemon, but you can always go over to GamesDoneQuick.com, check out the tracker. It's going to have all of the information on the prizes, uh, the minimum bids required for them, upcoming speedruns, incentives, and everything about the marathon. Very cool. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, once again, I want to thank you, Sent. And again, thank you, Lama, for taking the time to interview with us. Thank and you for having me. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, and this is Darkman78 signing off. And coming up very shortly is the Pokemon Red Race. <laughs> <laughs> really All right. Thank you so much, Darkman, for that interview. <laughs> All right, starting soon, we have Pokemon Red Race with Gunner Maniac, Kizaron, Extra Tricky, and Exoneru. Exoneru. I'll get it by the end of the thing. Exerion you. There we go. Third time's the charm. All right, and we're going to send it over to the runners. So let's give it up for all the racers. Worcester, Kizaron, Exarian, Worcester, Worcester. Okay. All right, uh, I think we're live. Yeah, okay, cool. So this is going to be the Red Glitchless race. And before we start, let's introduce all the runners. So go ahead from left to right. I'm Exarian. I'm MeatBig.net. Gunner Maniac 3. I am Extra Tricky. And I'm Shenanigans. And before we start, I'd like to plug the reverse badge order run by Etiquette, who you can see next to the couch. Uh, that's going to be a very interesting run, so please get your donations in for that. And also for the entire race, uh, we're going to have emotes for each of the runners. So Twitch chat, please spam them whenever uh, your runner is pulling ahead. So for Extra Tricky on the right, we have <laughs> Vohio. For Gunner Maniac, we have Craigasm. For Xarion, we are going to have Oh My Dog. And for Kizaron, it's Baby Rage. <laughs> I hate you. All right. So, countdown. Good yeah. to go? All right. That's Three, up. two, one, go. Yeah. So, this is. <laughs> so, this is Pokemon Red of the Glitchless category. And what that entails is simply beating the game as fast as you possibly can without using any glitches. The first thing you're going to notice is that they all have a one character name. This is going to save a lot of time due to text. And the reason for that is uh, text displays one character at a time. So if they had a long name, uh, it would take a lot of time to display the names. They're also going to be, some of them, grabbing the PC potion. Looks like all of them this time. <laughs> <laughs> In practice, only a few of them would, yeah. but definitely safer to grab that PC potion here. I was wondering, if it's, is everyone going to do it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. I was not going to learn my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be the first cutscene. The beginning's kind of slow. You have to go through a couple cutscenes and do a couple chores before you can move on. But they're going to be selecting their starter, and the most obvious choice for the starter is Squirtle. The reason they'll be selecting Squirtle is it is by far the best starter to defeat Brock with. And that's really the only fight that they need their starter for. Uh, I'd like to mention that stats are random, and this is one of the few times that stats will uh, matter for the Squirtle. If they have good speed, they'll speed tie the Bulbasaur. And if they have good special, they'll do a lot better against Brock. Uh, the way that the stats work is there's a random number from 0 to 16 assigned for each, or 0 to 15 assigned to each stat. 
And the better the number, the better the stat. So we'll get more into that later after the Brock fight. But for now, all you need to know is good speed, they'll outspeed the Bul- or speed tie the Bulbasaur and have a chance to outspeed it every turn. That can be really important because, you know, you can get an attack in before he growls and lowers your <coughs> attack and... Yeah. You know, the fight's dangerous enough to where we actually went out of our way to pick up a potion. It's, it's really inconsistent overall. Exactly. So for this first fight, they're going to be starting off with a Tail Whip. Tail Whip lowers the Bulbasaur's defense. And then hoping that the Bulbasaur does not growl, which it looks like Keyzeron and Gunner got. And hey, every yeah. single person got growled, so that's crazy. First, <laughs> first turn. So uh, growl is the worst case scenario. Status moves used by the enemy also have a 25% chance to miss. But unfortunately, that didn't happen, even if they're 100% accurate. So since we got growled on the first turn, I think we all used the second Tail Whip, which is normally not something we do, but it limits how bad the fight can actually go. Yeah, it's definitely more consistent to use the second Tail Whip there. Definitely, it's damage control. It, yeah. yeah. Also, criticals will ignore stat changes, which you might see here. If one of the runners <laughs> lands a critical, uh, they'll do a lot more damage to the Bulbasaur, or rather slightly more. So Tackle has an accuracy of 95%. I've missed it twice. Yeah. <laughs> when everyone gets a bad fight, no one does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you might see some of the runners uh, let their stats show up really quickly after the after the fight. They want to kind of know what their special and attack are because they can change happened. a few things. Oh, my goodness. That's that's, that's a reassuring thing. That's, how, that's <laughs> how you know things went south. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they're all through the fight. Slight lead for Xarion, but not too terrible. So if anybody's seen this run, uh, the last time it was at the GDQ in 2012, you will notice that they used Squirtle for the entire race, and that's not going to be the case here. Uh, it's actually faster to use Nidoran, so you'll see them catching one of those early on. Uh, so you can see most of the racers have a Radita on their screen, and oh, they'll wow. all be defeating this. Neat. All level 3 Raditas. This is... <laughs> You guys got the same RNG seed this time. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on the missed tackle. That's three now. I know. God, I got the god rat over here. Yeah. <laughs> Speed tie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, they need to defeat an encounter. They need to make up 10 experience before they make it to Brock. And killing a Radita here is just the easiest way to do that. Uh, they need to get bubble before the Brock fight. Because otherwise, going in with tackle would be absolutely terrible. So... They need to make sure that they, you know, defeat a Pokemon to reach that level 8 level to get Bubble. So it looks like Ixarion is getting a lot of encounters and Gunner's retaking the lead. Uh, they're grabbing the Oak's Parcel. That lets them get the Pokedex and it'll move the Old Man in the north part of Vermilion, or Verdian, and they'll be able to move on. The lead's going to be shifting around a yeah. lot right now. I mean, it's just too yes. much variance. Usually the first place you can tell who has a lead is after Mount Moon, but even then it's still kind of shaky based off of stats. Stats matter quite quite a lot in this race. Misty can change all of that. Oh yeah, Misty is terrifying. So the first thing you're going to notice after they enter Oak's lab is Gunner's going to be talking to Professor Oak from behind, and I believe the other three runners from the side. It doesn't matter whether you choose behind or the side. The reason they do this is the rival walks with a lot of swag, as you can see. He uh, he shakes his hair, he comes in, and he walks really slow. So they really don't want to have him walking more tiles on screen. So they limit the amount of sh uh, screen he has to walk to get to Oak. So that's why they go behind him or to the side. It actually saves a, about half a second, I think. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty significant. But it looks really silly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so everyone's at Oak now. That's pretty cool. Nobody got destroyed too badly. Or, I guess everyone got destroyed. So, no one <laughs> yeah. got destroyed. Yeah, you have to move behind Oak and Yellow, so it's just similar for me. Yeah. It's kind of cool seeing uh, you going behind Oak because you're so used to just that muscle memory from mm -hmm. Yellow. It just carries on. So after this, everyone will head up Route 1 for the last time. They're going to enter the Mart and buy some Pokeballs. There's going to be three Pokemon they catch throughout the run. The first is Nidoran Male on Route 22. They also need to catch a Pokemon that learns Fly and the Pokemon that can learn Cut. So they'll need those three. And sometimes the Flying Pokemon can also learn Cut, so they might only need to catch two, but that's a pretty rare situation. Neat. So as we walk, <laughs> as we walk up Route 1 the, third time, or the second time, we're going to be keeping track of what the last encounter we get is. Yeah. So unfortunately, I didn't get an encounter, <laughs> but maybe someone else can explain what they're thinking about with that. 
Yeah, so there's a trick called desum manipulation. It's generation one exclusive, and it lets you kind of know what your next Pokemon is based off of what the last encounter you got was. So they can actually track, say they get a level three Pidgey near the end of Route 1. They can track that value until they get to the Route 22 grass and then use that to get their Nidoran. Um, it's a kind of difficult trick and you'll see them at least attempting it. So it might look a little weird when they're, you know, standing in the grass not looking, but that may not be the case. Oh no. Looks like nobody got Neat. first encounter Nidoran. Or Xarion still has his attempt. Oh. Alright, so Keyzron has his Nidoran. It's level 4, which is the highest level Nidoran you can get in this grass. And he Yolo balls it. <laughs> I usually go for 2. Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, Gunner's Nidoran. Hey. Okay, good. It's kind of interesting with the ball shakes. It's actually based off of the percentage to catch the Pokemon. So in that situation, after uh, Keyzron saw the ball shook twice, he knew he caught it. I threw the potion at the Nidoran. <laughs> you threw the potion at the Nidoran. <laughs> we were talking about that. I'm just switching. <laughs> item order is really weird, and a lot of the runners don't pick up the PC potion normally, so the Pokeballs are almost always in slot one, but because they're in slot two now, it's kind of silly for them to press down there with muscle memory. It looks like everyone has their Nidoran, at least on screen, so that shouldn't be too bad. Looks like, yeah, everyone's caught theirs now. So perfect. No one's too far behind at Nidoran. The racers will also be picking up a few piece, uh, potions throughout the run. There's one hidden in the tree there. Uh, there's one in front of the bug catcher you might see some people pick up. It's nice to have potions, especially early on, and also especially if your Squirtle isn't great, because they'll need an extra two turns on Brock. And having two extra turns on Brock, you can take a lot of damage, so having the potions is really nice. The runners are also walking in a very strange path through the forest. If you look at the grass tiles, some of them have a flower in the bottom right of that sprite. Those patches cannot generate encounters. So the path they're taking is to maximize the steps that they take through those flower patches. There's 28 steps they have to actually walk in grass that can generate encounters. And it's pretty unlikely that they get any, seeing as the encounter rate in Viridian Forest is the lowest in the game. It's one in 32 per step to get an encounter. So it's pretty unlikely, but. It happens. Sometimes more than once. Yeah. yeah. I've had four before the bug I've catcher. I've had six. Oh my goodness. Well, for the whole forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellow is even worse. <laughs> Yellow is over, it's like, it's like six times worse. <laughs> and no uh, flower patches. So unfortunately, Keyzron got poisoned. Uh, poison thing is a 20% poison. <laughs> 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 you got the, uh, the keys of Squirtle, the blind one. <laughs> if anyone has Franker faces support uh, Helen Squirtle, I believe. Yes. <laughs> so he's going to have to heal here, which is really unfortunate. Poison Sting does three damage, five with the critical, nice and since he's poisoned, he'll do even more. So he needs to make sure he doesn't fall below that health. Gunner as well got poisoned. Turn one. Oh, man. Yeah, poison loses a ton of text here. It deals damage over time. It's really crappy if you get poisoned. They do, they do have an antidote, though, to heal it off, at least, but using it during the fight would force them to use the Pokemon Center if they got poisoned the second time, which is bound to happen. Looks like everyone's almost done with the Weedle fight. Again, it's very bad to critical hit on this fight, because if you do land a critical, it will ignore the two Tail Whips that they use at the start, and they'll do the damage from if they were at... Uh, if the Weedle was at no stat changes, so they really do not want to critical on that fight, but I didn't see any criticals. I think everyone had to use the antidote too. <laughs> That's kind of silly. Yeah, everyone's having a fairly similar start, which is kind of cool to see. Two encounters. <laughs> at least no Pikachus. There's a 1% <clears throat> chance you can get a level five Pikachu in the forest, and it can actually kill your Squirtle, which is really bad if it happens. So anyway, it's Brock time. All the racers will be going straight to Brock. And depending on your Squirtle stats, this can either be a not scary fight or a terrifying fight. It's like, do I save or don't I save? Based yeah, on exactly. Your special value. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, having 13 special here is very bad. You also notice that they put their Nidoran in the front of their party. This is because they need to split the experience from Brock's Pokemon so that Nidoran gains levels. At level eight, Nidoran Male learns Horn Attack 
which is extremely powerful. And it also knows Leer, so they're able to take advantage of that even more. So it makes a lot of sense for them to level up their Nidoran here. Okay, those look like pretty okay stats the speed's for Kizan. Good, but good speed. Well, uh, good attack. Not, not bad great speed. speed. <laughs> no, it's a level four, so. Oh, that was four. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see now. So, yeah, this is, again, the most important part of this early game is how are the Nidoran stats? Oh, did you have good special? Yeah. Okay, so Kizan should be safe, barring a Gen 1 miss. I hope I didn't jinx you. <laughs> With the blind squirtle. Slapped you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Tricky has decent stats. Tricky, too. I saw, yeah. had decent stats as well. Uh, Gunner's about to get his first glance. Not ten. Not ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We can deal well. with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not great, but good enough. Uh, Keys are what were your stats at 15, eight? 15, 15, 12. 15, 15, 12. So that's good speed, average attack, and average special, which is pretty much everything you can which ask is for. Pretty in much race. better than every practice nitto. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gunner had a nitteran yesterday. That was uh, unfortunate. <laughs> it was a smutty ran. Yeah. So you may be questioning why he's using tail whip on the onyx. That's because he's stalling the bide turns. If he were to bubble, uh, the onyx would deal double damage to him from the bubble, and he would just die instantly. So you have to stall. Uh, Tricky, how are the stats? 15 attack, 14 speed. Okay, so kind of similar to Kizaron, except slightly worse speed. Yep. Yeah, the attack and speed matter a lot. The attack is going to save almost a minute, two minutes on Route 3, and the speed is going to matter a lot later in the run. 15, 12, 14, 11. Okay, so, so not bad. And then, uh, Xarian, what about you? Uh, 15, 12, 14, 12. Okay, so everyone has 15 attack and uh, either 14 or 15 speed. So fairly similar for all the racers. Yeah, if you have a 14 attack, you lose a ton of time, and Misty is quite a bit harder too. Yeah. So, so very nice to see at least average Nidorans. Yeah. So they're also going to be setting their options, as you saw on Tricky's screen and you're about to see on Gunner's screen. They need to set their options so that the battle style is now set. They will no longer be switching in battle. So they don't need to have the option set uh, as shift anymore. They'll also be monitoring their stats as they level up on Route 3 to kind of get a judge of exactly what their stats are. So for example, on Geezer on screen, he just had 16 attack. So that means he's on the lower ends, I believe, of the 15s. Route 3 is kind of interesting because they'll be using Leer a lot to weaken the Pokemon and then follow up with Horn Attack. And also being hit by String Shot boosts their attack due to a, um, I guess, a oversight called Badge Boosting. It's kind of silly how it works, but when they defeated Brock, they got his badge. And having Brock's badge gives you a 9 8 boost to your attack. And whenever their stats get changed, it recalculates their stats with the badge boost. So if they have, say, 100 attack and then they nice. have a String Shot hit them, it will get boosted by 9 8 And again, status moves used by the opponent have a 75% chance to hit and only a 25% chance to miss. And unfortunately, String Shot can miss, even though they want it to hit them. So that can be uh, costly if it misses a few times. Yeah, this chart is mostly about PP management. Yeah. Not dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. So here's Short's guy. Uh, Luckily, Kizron has good speed, so he'll be faster than the Ekans. Uh, a few racers might be slower. Uh, if you have 14 oh, speed, mercy, it's a, mercy. there's a chance that you're slower. Yeah, this Rattata is terrifying. It has quick attack, which just deals so much damage. Uh, if he uses Tail Whip on turn one, it's terrifying. Tail Whip there is actually great. Nice, five so, the attack. Five? five? Yep. <laughs> oh no. Have fun. So that was the worst possible 15 attack for Xarion, which is kind of unfortunate. I have perfect speed. Wow. Oh, wow. That helps a lot. Keys Agatha. Uh, Keys Agatha. <laughs> yeah, you can see all the racers saving before a fight. And we see them didn't. all saving before a fight. You know it's going to be scary, <laughs> uh, even though it's very early in the run. All right, so barring a Gen 1 miss, <laughs> no M&M &M from Keys are Hey. On. Yeah, it looks like everyone's now on the Radita, except Keys are on has a slight lead. Mount Moon will rectify that soon. Yeah, Mount Moon is very random, so anything can happen when the racers get there. All right, so here's where we'll see if 
Tricky ended up getting good speed. If he has good speed, uh, he would have outsped her speed tide. Uh, so this might be a speed tie with the Ekans. Hopefully it is. Hopefully. Mine, mine will be. Okay, so Gunner already knows his stats from earlier. Yep, it okay, is. Okay, good. He got the speed tie. So that means, uh, well, one, he didn't get wrapped, which is fantastic. Uh, and two, he has at least decent speed. Uh, same with Gunner. Like, the problem with being slower than the Ekans is that he can chain wrap you forever because he gets to act again. Yeah. The way that wrap works is when the move ends, uh, you don't get your chance to attack, so you can just keep getting wrapped over and over and over. And actually, in the practice race, I think Tricky got wrapped 10 times in a row, despite yeah. it only being... Uh, speed tie loss wrap. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So yeah, Gunner's one yep. hit away from finishing the Ekans fight. Okay. There he goes. Okay, He won the speed tie, so that'll end it. I lost the one that mattered. <laughs> Something else you might see on Keyser on screen is if you critical the Metapod after it uses Harden, Ugh. again, criticals ignore stat changes. So, yeah, <laughs> hold select to critical. But if he's lucky, Can he'll critical the me? Metapod here. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, same with Tricky. He's on the Kakuna. If he criticals, it would have killed it there. Uh, again, this will knock out the Metapod if he lands a critical, hey. which would be really nice. Unfortunately, he didn't get it. It would still save a turn here. One more so. <laughs> oh, no commentators curse. Oh, oh, well, Exarion got it with the critical. But yeah, usually you'll see a few criticals on this route, and getting it on the Kakunas and Metapod is just fantastic. Because again, you just ignore those hardened boosts, which is normally terrifying. Get him B. Even with no criticals, since I didn't get any string shots, I should be fine. It's really your horn attack count that suffers. Yeah. When when you get string shotted early in the fight. Yeah, exactly. Now my speed is so high that when we take badge boost into account, I wouldn't mind one string shot from this fight because I'll still outspeed the Metapod. But yeah, it didn't yeah, happen, like so. this string oh, well. shot is actually benefiting me a lot. That was a range, but now it's gonna die. Yeah, and I'm still faster than the Metapod. Yeah, so getting hit by the string shots, while it could allow the Metapods to be faster and get it hardened out on turn one, sometimes it's good to be hit by string shot because you get that slight attack boost. Uh, the badge boost ends, so whenever those stats get reapplied, it ends whenever you level up, switch out, die, or the fight ends. So you'll kind of notice a few places throughout the run where leveling up can mess with the badge boosts, and they'll be trying to avoid that because they'll want to keep their badge boosts maybe through a Pokemon. So Keyzron's now finished Route 3, and he'll be catching a Flyer. This grass has a 90% chance to yield a Pokemon that learns fly, and a 10% chance to yield something that knows sing, which <laughs> luckily we didn't see. And it's actually nice that he got a Spearow, because he could choose to trade this for a Farfetch, which also learns cut. So this is the Pokemon I was talking about. If they get, they could trade this uh, for the Farfetch and get cut that way. Uh, they need the Pokemon with cut later on, and nothing they currently have can learn it, so they do need to catch something for it. It does take like 50 seconds to do the trade, but it's better than searching for a cut, uh, for a cut Pokemon. Exactly. Tricky lost like over two minutes looking for a cut Pokemon yesterday. <laughs> oh man. Yep. Yeah, Oddish can be a troll despite being a 35%. So I lost one turn there due to running out of horn attacks, but yeah. I mean, that happens. Hopefully okay. you don't get the level eight Pidgey again. You yeah. kind of want to save one horn mm. attack for the flyer, just in case it ends up being a level eight, because a level eight will take almost no damage from tackle, and you want things to be below half health when you're throwing Pokeballs at them. All right, so Gunner got his. Okay. okay. Looks, did everyone get Spearow this time? Yeah, I think. I think everyone got yep, Spearow. Everyone got Spearow. I thought Jigglypuff would find me even here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have still criticaled. <laughs> So yeah, uh, you may have also noticed Keyzeron picked up Water Gun. Uh, I don't think anyone has good enough attack that they'll be skipping it, but there is a strategy with really good attack. You can skip picking up Water Gun and do a different fight later on. But I think all the racers will be picking up Water Gun here because it's I'm a lot safer. I'm actually just going to skip Water Gun because I prefer Water Gun skip. Okay, so Tricky is skipping it. And you can highlight the differences in the route. It probably works out. Yeah, exactly. Also, just look at the beauty of that yellow Mount Moon. That's a, a taste of what's to come. <laughs> <laughs> Caves are a lot of fun on Inverted Palette, to say the least. We do have only $5,000 to go to get that bonus run for Pokemon Blue. Oh, and wow. Then Very nice. Once that is met, there are some more donation incentives for more fun and shenanigans to come, so keep hey. an eye out for that on the tracker. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah I know Taskblock has some incentives too. That would be <coughs> amazing to see. So everyone's reaching the super nerd fight. Something very interesting about the super nerd is there's a thing uh, in this game called trainer AI, and it's different for some trainers. The super nerd is one example. His Voltorb will always use Screech on turn two, and that's actually really useful for the runners because, again, status moves that change their stats give them an attack boost currently. So they're able to deal extra damage and sometimes knock out the Voltorb even in two turns if they get Screeched on turn one. I had no idea this nerd had AI until yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> You never questioned. I thought he did, no. Screech? I just thought he, I, he really likes Screech, or yeah. I never noticed. I don't know. Oh, good critical there by Tricky. So that'll take it out. Uh, he wouldn't have gotten it even with the badge boost. Another thing to notice is the runners will be occasionally using Poison Sting when an opponent Pokemon is low on health. There's a difference between what we call Shake moves and Flash moves. So Flash moves are what you see with Horn Attack on Gunner's screen and you're about to see on Xarion's screen. The Pokemon will flicker. Uh, okay. I think we'll actually get this range on that badge boost. Yes. Nice, but wow. That Very nice. That first roll was nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy seeing that. And then on Xarion's screen, he no, he didn't get enough damage, but <laughs> he would have used know. Poison Sting to finish it off because the animation is faster. It, uh, it shakes instead of flashes and it's, I believe, 50 frames faster. So they'll be using Poison Sting a few times throughout the run. Even with not very effective or super effective text, it's still faster. Yeah, the text difference is maybe 20 frames and the uh, the sh animation is 50 frames. So you still save at least some time. And it's it's significant. It's almost a second every time. Mount Moon has fixed everything again. <laughs> <laughs> we have no control over how many encounters we get. So sure if someone do. gets more encounters, <laughs> then they just lose time. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but Encounters, that's how Mount Moon works. Depending on the length of the cry, the Pokemon lasts anywhere from 10 to 11 seconds. Yeah. Or, I mean, if it's a Jinx, I guess it's a little longer than that. But <laughs> <laughs> no wild Jinxes. Yeah. This fight's also really nice. They're making up a lot of experience in Mount Moon. The reason for this is they have to be level 25 for Misty Starmie. There's just no way around that. And it's better to make up the experience early on rather than later because now there'll be a Nidorino for a couple fights that they're about to do and eventually a Nido King. Misty is hard enough at 25. Like, <laughs> Yeah, hands off. <laughs> once, once you start evolving, you take your hands off the controller because pressing B can be devastating there. <laughs> Not, yeah, only, like, not only does it stop you from evolving into Nidorino, but like we pick up the Moonstone now, so it's two evolutions that you're robbed of until you gain the next level. Yeah. Don't touch the controller. Exactly. It's better to just be safe. I take my hands off every time. You actually don't need to mash that mm. much for text boxes. A lot of them either clear themselves or you can just buffer A or B to close them. Yeah. So everyone's going to be teaching Water Gun who picked it up, but as you can see, Tricky's pulling ahead quite a bit. This is because some of the runners, wow, that's unfortunate. We'll be fighting the hiker I here to make up some experience. <laughs> uh, this will get them to level 17 early and then also give them some levels for Nugget Bridge. But Tricky's opted to skip Water Gun. Uh, he's uh, favoring that route right now. I think he has fairly good attack, so it makes sense too. I also got a very long stretch with no encounters. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is actually not the best yeah. thing right now. He needs to make up, were you level four or three? Three, so I'm probably actually going to just not get experience. Okay. Uh, it's really good to make up experience because then he'll be a higher level. Uh, as you can see, the other runners fighting the hiker, they're making up their experience now. But if he could have defeated three Zubats, uh, totaling 177 experience, he would have reached uh, the experience threshold he needed uh, to get Thrash early. But now he'll have to wait an extra fight to get Thrash later on. It's also going to make the Cerulean Rival fight a considerable amount worse. Yeah. Uh, because I'll only be level 17 instead of 18 for that fight. Yeah, exactly. Which so is very important. Yeah. Um, so there's actually a mechanic where if your level ends in 0, 3, 5, or 8, you actually deal slightly more damage. This is just due to how the game handles rounding. So because he'll be level 17 for the Pidgeot, though, you'll see he'll do slightly less damage to it. Which means it'll take an extra turn to kill, and it has Sand Attack. Yeah. Yep. Sand Attack in Gen 1 is terrifying. It, on its first use, it lowers your accuracy to 66% of what it normally is. And that's for 100% moves. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Crazy oh. is one way to put it. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. So we did see the supersonic hit from Tricky, but he got through it. That Any Zubat can be really scary with supersonic. Anyone with a Paris? 
Uh, nope. I didn't see any What's yet. What's a Paris? Yeah. <laughs> So one of the Pokemon that learns Cut that they could get in the run is a Paris. It's, I believe, hey. Oh, hey. it's on the screen, but uh, it's 20% on the bottom floor of Mount Moon. So it's somewhat likely that you'll see one. And luckily, one of the racers got it. And it's nice he can horn attack this. It's a little scary, but it will live. Uh, if it critical, it would die. But now he can catch his Cut Pokemon. You also no might punish. notice they're delaying the evolution to Nidoking when they're on the bottom floor of Mount Moon. And that's because Nidorino's Cry is significantly faster than Nidoking's, and it would lose a lot of time to evolve uh, because every time they get an encounter, they have to hear their Pokemon's Cry. Look, Xarian got the Paris as well, so that's really nice. Paris is a pretty big deal. Yeah, it really is. Worst case scenario, you, you do have a Spearow. I, I'm happy to have it. Yeah, yeah. It gives you that backup just in case. You do not want to deal with Oddish. Yeah, Oddish is scary. Am I there yet? <laughs> <laughs> You're almost out of there. Has anyone kept count? Have you? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so something cool that Extra Tricky will be doing here, you don't actually generate any encounters when you're on that platform where the fossils are, so he's going to do a little bit of strange movement to you're maximize the steps he's not getting encounters. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, exactly tied up to the evolution. That's really cool. Yeah, this is like actually crazy how close this race is right now. Yeah, it might look like I'm in the lead, but... Not having a Paris and also skipping Water Gun means that the rest of the racers will be making up a good amount of time later yeah. on. It's going to be pretty significant. This actually no. could be no. completely tied. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, disable could disable Horn Attack, which would uh, waste a few turns. In so. later gens, it would disable Horn Attack, yeah. but it's random which move it chooses and for how many turns it disables you. Yeah, I think it can disable up to seven turns, yeah, yeah. which is <laughs> devastating. I would Poison Sting here to save animation, but it's disabled. So. Yeah. And even then, getting the Screech would have been nice, but oh yeah, you level up because so you did the hiker. This level 18 gives me the innate bonus that I need to possibly two-shot this coughing. Yep. Probably, actually. Looks yeah, like it's like good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's one reason why they would fight the hiker. He saved the turn over extra tricky on that coughing. So you'll see a few places where they save a couple turns. The most important is on the Pidgeot, though. Uh, tricky will take three hits, but all the other racers will take two. Oh, the heretic. <laughs> Feel it, Twitch chat. <laughs> Twitch chat is fuming right now. That loses a very small amount of time, but, you know. It also it, generates an extra chance for an encounter. That's true. Another Clefairy. And wow, the 12. the 12. That's 1%. 1%. percent You should run it. Do us all a favor. <laughs> Could it be? No. So he that was, was kind of tracking the D sum there. So he, he knew that was close to Paris, but unfortunately it wasn't. He gets one more chance and no Paris for Gunner, which is kind of sad. I'm just, I mean, 12 Clefairy when you need a Paris, come on. <laughs> I got a critical on Pidgeotto, so that'll let, make it so that I uh, do it in three turns instead of four, which yep. is extremely nice. Yeah, and he also didn't get Sand Attacked, which is a bigger deal. Uh, you normally, can die. Like, yeah, you can actually just die to that Pidgeotto. You would take a uh, four turn if it meant no Sand Attack. I would 100% of the time. You also notice Gunner is healing in Cerulean. Uh, all the racers will be. And that's one, to get horn attacks back, and two, to set Cerulean as their hub. When they escape rope later on, they want to reappear here. You and actually have to use the center to set your hub, so. Yeah, in later generations, you can walk in and leave immediately, but in this game, you can't. First to enter, last movie. to leave. I'm such a team player. <laughs> Congrats on being the sixth man, Keys. Uh. So it looks like all the racers are out of Mount Moon, and it's fairly close as well. Uh, Heezron and Xarion both have a Paris, so they're about 50 seconds faster um, than Gunner, but he's already done a little bit in Cerulean. The main place that we'll see some leads changing is coming up right here. Uh, this rival fight is nice. terrifying. This is probably the worst fight in the game. It may well be. And Yellow, it definitely is. Yeah. You also notice uh, Xarion's picking up a rare candy. That's what you want to see. Oh, Just okay, go yeah. ahead and Very go good. first. Quick attack. Yeah, all the racers will be picking up two rare candies, and the reason for that is once they hit level 21, they'll use both candies, and that will get them straight to the move Thrash, which is extremely important. And got Gunner that got one in four sand attack fail with Clutch. It's yeah. a really big deal. Yeah, exactly. Again, status moves can miss when the opponent uses them, and 
that's just fantastic for the run because, you know, Sand Attack Miss is amazing. How's it feel to be on the rival fight? <laughs> How's it feel to have a Paris? Oh, it feels good. <laughs> oh, oh, and and perfect speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. That's gonna <laughs> save a lot of time later on. What does Misty have to say about that? Yeah, so the Misty fight, uh, you need 13 speed DV to outspeed the Starmie, and the only racer who has that is sitting to my left. So <laughs> that will be very nice when he gets there. It's decently rare to be faster than Starmie. You need very, very good speed for that to be the case, and you exactly. can't. There's nothing you can really do to influence it. Yep, it's just pure luck with the stats. Alright, looks like everyone's had a fairly good rival fight up to now. Good, Eight. okay. Yeah, no sand attacks. That's another uh, really crazy thing to see. What does our special look like across the board? Your special, I think uh, everyone average. is fairly mediocre. I haven't checked mine. Mine's terrible. So. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We'll be seeing at level 23, they'll get a long chance to look at their stats, and that's when they really know what their uh, stat lines ended up being. So you'll get to see that fairly soon from Tricky. He's, I believe, Two or no, three fights away because he didn't make up the experience in Mount Moon. It's just All inefficient. Right. To, yeah, it's inefficient to check your stats every level, and since they pop up anyway when you use your candies, you just wait. Yeah, it's not like you really need to know the stats beforehand. It's just better to wait. Another example of the level ending in zero. Uh, this Weedle doesn't necessarily die at 19, but it will at 20 every time. Yep. And Tricky, when he was at the Weedle, was level 19 because he did make up the experience. But I didn't see if he killed it in one hit or not. I did not. Yeah, so that's there another turn saved. So that's now about 20 seconds made Look up. Look at Eminem over here. Experience. Yeah. That was five turn, I believe. <laughs> the rapping is happening. Five turn rap is only one and eight. That's really unlucky. Yeah. That happens occasionally, though. Yep. I think that's one of the very few times I've seen rap. I think you got it for a turn or two, and that was the only other time. So yeah, everyone did hiker strats, so everyone will be level 20 here, except for Tricky. He's uh, kind of on his own with the experience routing. Neat. Oh, good critical. That Caterpie does not go down in one hit unless you critical. But it's also a Caterpie. Yeah, that's true. We can't really do much, but you know, same like turn, runs same lost to Caterpies. <laughs> Don't underestimate. Not that Caterpie. <laughs> not that one. Uh, I've died there. Wow, well, that's actually I mean, I, I mean, I have to, to be fair, but okay. it was mostly my fault. <laughs> Splitting experience is fine now that's without a experience in Mount Moon, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought so. I was just verifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes there's situations that occur that are just yeah. never really happening. So Tricky is going to heal here. If the other racers had six hit points at this point, they would not be. And that's because the other racers will have Thrash for this fight. Tricky does not. And this Mankey will not go down in one hit unless he criticals the horn attack. But with Thrash, the Mankey goes down. So it's kind of unfortunate he's going to lose a turn here. But again, that's just the cost of skipping Water Gun and also not making up the experience in Mount Moon. And the Mankey has Karate Chop, which deals a lot of damage. So that's why he healed. There's some moves oh. in this game that always critical. And one of the moves that always criticals is Karate Chop, given your Pokemon has more than 64 base speed. The way that criticals actually work is it's your speed, uh, base speed on the Pokemon, divided by 512, and that's your chance to critical. But with some moves, it becomes one in, uh, or your Pokemon's base speed over 64, like with Karate Chop. Uh, this is also where everyone gets to kind of see their stats. So uh, Tricky and Gunner are looking at theirs now. They both had fairly good attack, not perfect, but decent enough. And it looked like both of you had good speed. Yep, I had I 51. Eight. Yeah, 51. So 51. I have... Uh, nine to ten, I think. Is nine yeah. eleven a thing? Um, I believe fifty-one is eleven. It, it uh, oh yeah, you're right. It's ten to eleven. Yeah. So some stats don't oh, actually exist. So okay. you can kind of. Or is it out. eleven to twelve? All uh, right. Is it of just nerds. eleven? I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to Pokemon. It's just a math quiz disguised as a video game. I can game. figure it. I can figure out if it's eleven or not at Misty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Keyzeron has perfect speed, and also fairly decent attack. How are the specials? Wait, 52 isn't it? Oh, wait, 52 no, is not, not 52 perfect. is that's not 14, perfect. That's yeah. memeing. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Wait, does that even outspeed Misty? Yes. Yeah. It okay, can. It still does. 52 wait. can be a speed tie. Okay. But, no. And Ixarian, how are You're your fast. stats? I mean, he can know whether he's faster. Well, he's faster. I can find out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> So your HP DV oh. is co uh, composed of the low bits of your other DVs. So 
he can find out by looking at his HP whether his speed is even or odd and use that to figure out whether he's faster than Starmie. Yeah. There's so many ways you can figure out your stats, and that's just one of them. So Tricky's doing the top hiker, and that's because he doesn't have water gun. If he had water gun, he would fight the bottom hiker. And oh. fighting the bottom hiker with only thrash and no water nice. gun is nice horrible. Fight. And that was Very a crazy nice. range. Very that was good. A, that was a range at the end that definitely wasn't yeah. guaranteed. To <laughs> so that's where you lose the most time to having uh, skipped water gun. But luckily the fight went really well, so he's hardly going to lose any time to it. Yep. Thrash is just a speedrunning move. It's it really in, is. In every way, shape, and form. High risk, high reward, tons of damage. You don't have to select a move every time that you yeah, use it. Yeah, it skips it's, a lot of the menuing. It's amazing. Yeah, the way it actually works is when you use Thrash, it locks you in for three to four turns. And after three to four turns, which is 50-50, whether it's three or four, it confuses your Pokemon. So a lot of the time that they're using Thrash, they're going to use it when they only have to hit it three more times in that fight. And that's just to avoid that chance of confusion. But there's some unavoidable battles. And yeah, there's where uh, not skipping Water Gun saves a lot of time. You can see he just one hits the Onyx and moves on. Very Tricky, easy fight. Tricky had a four turn fight. Lots of not very effective tech. So just headshot the Onyx with Water yep. Gun. Four times super effective Water Gun. Yeah. That Onyx is very frail to special moves, and Water Gun is four times effective. What is Onyx's special in general? I think it's like 20, 20 or 30 yeah, or something. It's terrible. Yeah, its defense is 160, so that's why you don't <laughs> want to thrash it. It And it's also not very effective because it's rock. You'd be lucky to get through half its bar. <laughs> yeah. So you can think of picking up Water Gun and fighting the hiker as an investment in the mm -hmm. future. Uh, you are spending about an extra minute in Mount Moon, uh, and you'll save at least at least 30 seconds, I would say, later on. Yeah. It can be more, it can be less. And with a bit but, of luck yeah. skipping it, you can always just make up that time. Like, if you crit the Geodude, that can save a turn. If you crit the Weedle or the Caterpie, that saves some turns. And I ideally, you're not taking Water Gun with good stats. Exactly. All right, I've got a quick announcement. The bonus run Pokemon Blue Reverse Badges has been met. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You will not be disappointed. Thank you for making that happen. Oh yeah, that, that run is amazing. It also means I only have to move two feet. Yeah. <laughs> My knee appreciates it. Yeah. So did we all get poisoned by the Weedle? Yes. yes. Okay, oh, so yeah. we're all yes. picking up the ether. Well, I would. I was the only one with the real choice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since I did the water gun skip, there's a hidden elixir nearby that uh, top hiker. And if I didn't get poisoned, then the elixir would uh, set up the menus a little bit better. But since I got poisoned and used the antidote, I went ahead and picked up the ether instead. The idea is we want to have exactly 20 items in our bag later on so that gym leaders won't give us their TMs. And we pick up extra elixirs anyway. So by picking up the ether here, it fills an extra slot in our bag, which makes up the antidote slot if we didn't get poisoned. But if you take water gun, you have to pick up the ether. Yeah, the bag holds 20 items in Gen 1, and they'll be playing around that quite a bit. So it's kind of interesting to see how the runners will choose to deal with their bag management. So this is a kind of interesting trick. In Gen 1, some buildings can be dug or escape rope out of. So Bill's house is one of them. As you can see, Trick, he escape roped out. And this is the reason they healed in Cerulean. It saves the entire walk back, which is really nice. They removed the ability to escape rope and dig out of here in Pokemon Yellow, but in Red it works, so it's really cool to save a little bit of time there. In Yellow it auto paths you back to Ville, but you actually have to talk to him in Red. It's yep. weird. Yeah, it's kind of silly. Have you ever just sat there? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's funny. Yeah, it looks like everyone's still fairly close. Again, Gunner and Tricky have a slight lead, but neither of them have a cut Pokemon. So uh, Kizaron and Xerion will be at least making up some time due to having a Pokemon with Cut already. So this is insanely close up to Misty. But that could all change. Misty is by far the hardest fight in this run. Uh, and you will see some saving. And Unless you have really good speed. And oh, then yeah, it, of And course. then it's free. <laughs> yeah. <Hey. laughs> so did you end up uh, with enough speed to outspeed? He has no idea. Oh, we'll find he out. does. Together. <laughs> oh, he's not checking. He's just going for it. So yeah, here's the Misty fight. So I believe Tricky has good enough attack to two-shot the Starmie, given probably, no Probably, probably. It's <laughs> actually a range even if you have perfect attack. Yep. And, and this can be scary 
because he didn't make up the wow. experience. He was level 24 for the Staryu. And because Super. his level ends in a four instead of a five, which it will Goldine, now. Goldeen, no, not like this. <laughs> oh boy, oh. Misty's gym is not going well right now for people. But uh, you can see okay. he, okay. I think that's just nice. a reset for Tricky, <laughs> unless he Integrate. gets extra time. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that did not go well. So oh wow, this is 11. Yeah. So Tricky had to reset. He got critical by Bubble Beam, which will just outright kill you almost all the time. My D-pad got stuck, so I went down for like three times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, attempt number two. Yeah, attempt two for Misty. So I am speed tied with Starmie, which is better than it's not better being than nothing. speed tied. Well, for a marathon race. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally, you're trying to control your exact health value very specifically, and being speed tied makes that impossible. But right. in this case, it's not <laughs> so bad. And because my attack is really bad, I'm actually going to send in Squirtle for Starmie. Oh, wow. Okay. In hopes of damaging it a bit and lowering its speed. Yeah, he's doing a very safe strategy. It's, uh, it's quite Starmie. slow, but it's faster than dying, and I'm pretty likely to die if I don't. Yeah, so he's picking a safer way to get through the fight. Oh, that was a scary Come on, range. guys. Come on. Come on, water gun. That was oh. a terrible okay, range. Okay, critical just, will end the fight. Speed tie. Oh, extra trick. He speed got tie, speed tie, speed tie. Okay. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so he has to switch out because he's confused. It's just way safer. All right, got the speed fall. Oh, So good. I'm one in four-ish, or three and four-ish to win this fight from Temps here. Attempt number yeah. three. He just needs Come to on. not be bubble beamed and not die to it. Okay. Come on, don't just critical. Don't critical, don't critical. It's fine. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Misty, everybody. Oh. That's so frustrating. Okay, it looks like Exarion is through. And... Scored all the heroes. He's on <laughs> is also through. So they both got through. So I Unbelievable just, with the star you wow. lost. So again, you really want to be level 25 for that star you for that rounding bonus we talked about earlier, ending in level, uh, a level ending in five. So it's very unlucky that he's missing that range. But I could I could have won the speed tie. It could have not critical. Yeah, there's so many ways he could have gotten out of that one. <laughs> I could have crit on the turn that she okay. X defended. Okay, I got this a four might thrash. please critical. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. I got okay. Zero. Yes. Yes. Water gun. Come on, Gunner. We're you in a we're it. in a good spot here. You it's can do it. I believe so in you. So unlikely to lose from here. That's so good. unlikely. X defend. Oh, this is the one so thing. Do don't do it. Come on. Just don't do don't it. Do don't it. do it. Don't do it. Okay. 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 okay and <laughs> good. No Gen one miss. Could have been worse. All right. And that's the hardest fight in the game. And. I mean, you guys, you all got to see it, so that can be terrifying, <laughs> especially with not perfect stats. So it's luckily hard. everyone's through. It's hard in the sense that you're likely to die, but it's really easy to execute. You yeah. just hit yeah, thrash. Yeah. <laughs> a, 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 and then you're, yeah. you're good. Yeah, you just ride the train. You press A and you're like, please, please. Oh. So everyone's gonna be now making their way to Vermilion and finally getting cut. But unfortunately, both Gunner yeah. and Extra Tricky do not have a Pokemon on their team that can learn. The cut. runners with Paris kill Misty on their first try. <laughs> <laughs> Typical of a race. So yeah, they do not need to look for Oddish. I, uh, Gunner and Tricky might opt to not look for Oddish in favor of trading their Spiro for a Farfetch, mm -hmm. but it's fairly slow to do that, but it's very consistent. If I find one, I find one. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> It, it's usually better just to not risk it oh. because you can lose a lot of time. No right. crit karate chop. No crit karate chop. You're actually in red bar, which is somewhat nice. I did get a jingle skip, but I still have to heal for the Pidgeys. Yep. Um, yeah. Pidgeys are too scary at 15. Yeah. So a trick's going to be coming up that both Gunner and Tricky will be doing, and you could also see Keyser and Xarion just did. When they walk into the underground, they'll be picking up the full restore. And if they do it quickly enough, they will instantly be able to move after they pick it up. And this is due to what we call a jingle skip. It appears multiple times throughout the run. And when they pick up the full restore, it'll try to load the music from the tunnel and it will overwrite the jingle that the full restore makes. So they'll just completely skip the animation and the jingle, which is really cool. And it's actually really easy to get that. You just hold A and buffer it. You have 17 frame window. Yeah. It's really easy, but you just saw Tricky do it, and you're about to see Gunner after he teaches Bubble Beam to his Nita King. It's a frame perfect trick. <laughs> yeah, it's a frame perfect trick, guys. Don't talk about the buffer. I swear if this last one. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, he wants to be at decent health here from the Nido King uh, because this Radicate has Quick Attack coming up, and it can deal pretty significant damage. So hopefully he avoids that. Stab Quick Attack. Yeah, Stab <laughs> Quick Attack from Eradicate with a decent chance to critical the boot. Radicate so you, is actually like really good. 
Yeah. Could it be? Maybe. Ooh. Oh, oh first encounter Oddish. Okay, so one that saves time, some time lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm the only one doing the trade now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it could critical. Okay, okay good. It I, did not. I had a run where I crit three of those in a row. Oh <laughs> man, are you out of potions? I I am out of potions. Okay. Yeah, so again, item management is huge in this run, and being out of potions, one, it's one less item, so we'll have to make that up later, and two, he has uh, no potions, so that can be a little bit scary. Ooh, that was weird movement. I was yeah. like, that guy is a Butterfree. Yeah, you and don't want to fight it's him. A, it's a mean Butterfree. It's a level 20 Butterfree. He has Sleep Powder, mm -hmm. Stun Spore, Confusion. Super effective Confusion. All kinds of bad moves. So yeah, everyone's going to be heading to the boat. Uh, some of the racers will opt to shop before they go to the boat, some after. Uh, I don't think it actually matters. It Does, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Do we have time for a quick special donation? Oh, of course. We have a $500 donation from Anonymous. It says... <laughs> <laughs> Dear Extra Tricky, Ooh, Don't oh. scrub this one up, you twit. <laughs> <laughs> Your crew at Dropbox is heckling you from SF today, and we miss you. Let's get fat on Blackjack Burgers with P92 in Jeep soon. <laughs> Thank you. We've been kind of bad about donations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's usually hard at the beginning of the run because there's a lot to talk about, yeah. but we'll have a little more, fun. you know, open-ended time. Yeah, yeah. This is usually about the point where we get some time to breathe. Uh, once you get thrash on it, okay, it becomes fairly simple. No problem. Just let me know when, when there's an opening. Mm. Yeah, of course. So yeah, this is the rival fight. This is the first fight where four turn thrash actually matters. Unless, of course, you skip water gun and have to fight the top hiker. But uh, they will not be using thrash on the Pidgeotto. They'll opt to two hit it with horn attack instead. And the reason for this is it's better to risk this uh, sand attack than it is to risk the four turn thrash. So they'll be doing that against the Pidgeotto. So then, now on the Raticate, you can either choose to thrash it, which Keyzeron did, or we'll see what Exarion chooses to do. He might choose to Horn Attack it twice, uh, but it's more consistent to Horn Attack it twice, but it's a little bit riskier to thrash. So. The main consideration is just your HP. Like, you can't give Raticate an extra turn yeah. if you're this high, so I'm just going to hope I get the four turn, and if I don't, then I'll switch out. Yep. Sacrifice Squirtle. Yeah, so you can see Tricky's Bubble Beaming the Raticate. He'll do that twice, and then he'll be guaranteed to... Uh, have the three turn thrash rather than the four. So you can see uh, Keyzeron did not get the four turn thrash, so he had to switch. Uh, All right, got, and got it, so he doesn't have to switch. But he and does then, have to heal. Yeah, he does have to heal before Surge. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> so Surge has a Voltorb with Sonic Boom, and that will always deal 20 damage if it hits. So hopefully we don't see that. I crit the Ivysaur. Nice. Of course. Nice. So critting the Ivysaur saves a turn, but because he did the consistent strategy, it wasn't super important. Just nice to get that turn save. I crit the Pidgeotto on turn two. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well done. Critting that Pidgeotto on turn one saves a turn, and you don't get a chance to get uh, sand attack. So it's really nice if that happens. You also notice the racers are skipping the jingle for uh, HMO1 cut. If you have a name that's four characters or shorter, you actually skip the jingle for it for some reason. I think it's in the Japanese version it always plays, yep. maybe. Yeah. In Japanese, yeah. the name for HMO1 is like Hiden ah. Machine O1. Oh, it's like kiss, seven finally. characters long, and <laughs> yeah. so you always get the jingle because the item name is very long. Yeah. It's worth noting the Japanese is significantly faster in this game, but we consider it a different category because the game is so heavily text-based. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely more interesting to watch if you can read the text. Ex so. I mean, yeah, and it's so much more, you know, viewer-friendly. So. Exactly. Though some people do runs on Japanese. I know Tricky has, I know mm -hmm. I have myself. It's, it's fun, but it's, you know, slightly different. But yeah, this is one of the few breaks that the runners have. So if you have a, a donation or two, now would be a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. All right, I definitely do. We have $500 from The Jumbo. Kizaron, I am disappointed. Seeing you race Pokemon Red, why don't you race Animorphs? Uh, Way mwah. better speaking. <laughs> Still, go get that Pokemon Blue bonus run. That was for you, Parker. <laughs> We've got $50 from Quack. Donate at least $50 every GDQ since the very first one. Now is the best time to make that awesome Pokemon Blue run happen. We got $50 from Anonymous. Thank you for all the great work you are doing. Please put this towards the Pokemon Blue Run. Thanks. 
We've got another $50 from St. Ayers donating for the Pokemon Blue Run because it was the game that started my life of video games. We just got so much love for the Pokemon Blue Run. We got a ton of comments for that, <laughs> for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, 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 no way. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to explain trash cans? Yeah, so the way they the suck. trash cans work, it's actually terrible. But the first can can only be in specific cans. So you'll see they're only checking some of them. And then the second can is either in an adjacent can, which Keysron just had, or the top left can, which is really silly. You saw on Exarion's screen, it was top left for the first switch and then top left for the second switch. Uh, the, the second switch can always be in the top left, so it's kind of silly when that happens. Something else you'll notice is uh, both of uh, Exarion and Keysron, they taught Dig to Paris, but both Tricky and... Uh, Gunner will have to teach Dig to Squirtle, which will lose a little bit of time later because their Squirtle will reach four moves. Oh. Oh, the God Cans oh. from Gunner. Nice. That's insane. Oh. We always talk about God Cans, but you very rarely see it. All right, so Tricky's the only one who still needs to get through Cans. Wow, it's been a while since I saw that. I know, yeah. Who's calling you? I don't know. <laughs> All right, come on. Okay, good. Cans were not uh, too terrible this time. Only Keyzron got trolled a little bit, but second try, you will take that almost all of the time. Crit. Okay. Okay, no Sonic Boom is good. I, I, I don't have potions, so yeah. Sonic Boom would have been really bad. Yeah, again, running out of potions can be a little bit scary, but hopefully it's not too bad. He does have the full restore if he's desperate, but... You That's really actually so that. interesting, the X speed there. Yeah. So items don't actually have priority in this game like they do in other games. What's actually happening is the Pikachu is quick attacking for priority and then Surge is X speeding over the quick attack to go first. Yep. Pretty rare to see that, but really interesting. Yeah, Gen exactly. programmed really nicely, as you can tell. Yeah, there's so I, many weird quirks about this game. As a player, I can't do, I can't, you know, <laughs> quick attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool if we could use items with priority. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so coming up is actually a really cool menu. It's a really good time for me to talk about some of the interesting menuing mechanics. But first, we're going to get the bike from the Shady Salesman. The bike is just so much faster for movement. Shout right. out to Instant Text. Yeah. yeah, so there's actually a glitch that you can do, if we call it a glitch, where you can get Instant Text from the bike shop owner. And it saves significant time, but it's very risky. So it's a different category for the game. So I'll explain it on keys or on screen if you want to look at that. When he exits the building, he's going to do a buffered input down to his second item, swap that for uh, the bike, and then teach Thunderbolt by buffering up to it. And then teach that to Nido King in the third <laughs> slot. Oh, you're po <laughs> <laughs> Did you just notice that? Yes. Unbelievable. Meme. But yeah, teaching Thunderbolt also removes Thunderbolt from his bag, which puts his cursor back... Oh. Controller, please! <laughs> <laughs> it puts his cursor back to the top of his items, and he can instantly hop on the bike. So you can do all kinds of crazy things with the menuing. Good okay. job on the Pokemon. Uh, on the off games. chance my controller craps out on me, does anyone have a spare? <laughs> I do in my backpack, okay. which is right by Montebank. He can grab it out of there if needed. We have $50 from Shady Salesman. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's Good a timing. cool bike. Do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's actually text. really easy to execute the instant te uh, text bug. Oh, yeah, you four. just press B. Press yeah. B? Press B. This is also what we call the four-turn thrash girl. Uh, again, one of the few times in the run where you have to risk the four-turn thrash. She has four Pokemon. You cannot defeat her Oddish with any move other than thrash, so you have to use it. It's got and status moves. It's, it's bad. It's disgusting. And, of course, if you get unlucky, like, keys oh, are on. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Yeah, he has to like, burn the four. You're, you're three out of four for nothing to go wrong on this fight Yeah, you at just all. win three But the out worst of four case times. scenario is so okay. bad. That wasn't as bad as it could have been, but losing the full restore is store. scary. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see if Gunner gets it coming Come on, up big here. Guy. Yeah, the, uh, uh, there's an Oddish in Rock Tunnel that sometimes survives Thrash and it has Stun Spore, <laughs> and if you don't have your full restore, I hate you. you have to do the rest of Rock <laughs> Tunnel paralyzed. Yeah, exactly. Reminder, Gunner is a fraud. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> your Nido King's a fraud. Yeah. So coming up on the Xarion screen, he's going to do something fairly interesting. He's going to actually repel before Rock Tunnel, and this just has to do with buffering your inputs. 
So he's gonna use the repel and he wouldn't be able to use the repel with a buffered input in Rock Tunnel because he would risk getting an encounter. Would you like to talk about how he's cheating too? Yeah, so he's also using what we call the cheater palette, which is the strange brown shade that he's using. And the way it works is you can kind of see the trainers in Rock Tunnel when you use that palette. So it's usually better for speedrunning to use it because it makes your movement slightly easier but it's also a little bit uh, ugly to some people, so they'll choose not to use it, like Gunner using the standard palette and uh, Kizaron using the, the- best palette? The best palette, the, uh, what would you call it? The pastel palette. Mm -hmm. But more interestingly, we'll see uh, extra poison tricky, tricky here with the poison. Oh, uh, yeah. He has the best rock tunnel palette and uh, I'm excited for it. If you have sunglasses sitting nearby, now's a great time to go grab them. <laughs> Because it's no longer rock tunnel, it is light tunnel. Twitch chat is just, it's going to be great. Yeah, I didn't bring sunglasses and I'm worried. I'm going to go back and watch this part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like none of the racers are opting to take any risks here. You can go for red bar in rock tunnel, but it's fairly risky. But Tricky is in red bar, but we'll see if he decides to heal or not. Did we talk about that? Oh, I don't think we did. <laughs> so red bar is actually a mechanic when your Pokemon is below 21% of its hit points. Well, don't be a casual shenanigans. It's <laughs> 20.83, repeating of course, okay. which <laughs> is also known as 524 if you like fractions like I do. <laughs> here we go. Watch but yeah, nerds. here's here's light tunnel. <laughs> Close your oh. eyes, avert your gaze. But yeah, uh, anyway, red bar, the way it works is when you're below the, you know, whatever Gunner said, health, uh, <laughs> you will skip Pokemon cries. So as you can see, the Cubone didn't make a cry. Well, it did, but he could act during it. And the Slowpoke as well, he'll instantly be able to act while the cry is playing. And it saves significant time. Uh, later on, they'll be getting red bar and it will be saving about a minute and a half to two minutes compared to not having red bar. It's crazy how much Die, die, die. Okay. okay, good. He got the Oddish. Uh, Keyzeron looks like he got through it fine. Yeah, everyone's gotten through the Oddish. Oddish so is the gatekeeper. It really is. Well, it's mostly for Tricky at this Tricky point. Tricky is not going to have fun on the Oddish I'm going to save before the Oddish because yeah. I will be level 29 and it is very unlikely to die. Yeah, again, the level uh, rounding. It ends in 0 if you're 30 and at 29 it ends in 9. So he doesn't get that slight rounding bonus. So it makes it even harder to kill the Oddish in one hit. And again, Oddish has all kinds of scary moves. It I just, just did crazy the stuff. weirdest movement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, my character's concussed now, so. <laughs> I was like, I've never been on this tile. There's going to be a trainer here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, the trainers, if you're not using the cheater palette, you can't really see them. It's just all pitch black. Which is so. why it's the oh, cheater The Oddish palette. died. Nice. The Oddish oh. actually died. Yeah, one that is amazing. crazy. Wait. You were 29? Yeah. And you didn't crit. 29. Yeah. And no what is crit, your attack? It just died. Uh, it was, it's a pretty good 14. I think uh, it was like, It's a pretty good 15. Yeah, okay. it was like 10 dB. I That's think. still like no more than one in three. Yeah. Yeah. That was very good that he hit that range. 27%. Yeah. Yeah. So he no he's longer has to worry about it. <laughs> Let the light flow through you. I can confirm Twitch chat is 100% oh cool God. cats right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put those shades on. All right, so it looks like Exarion is the first out of Rock Tunnel. I think he had... Did you have good special as well? I have four special, so no. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> you can actually do a strategy Four special, on this fight. five attack. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, on He was fight? just saying... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically you um, use whichever status higher, attack or special, roughly. Yeah. yeah. Special has a bit of a bonus, as in, like, you can have worse special than attack and still want to you know, bubble beam there, but Thrash is faster. Yeah. Thrash is about a second faster, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the ranges are equal, you go for Thrash. Yeah, exactly. All right, Xarion, or uh, Xarion's out now. We're the same person. It's yeah, like... basically. Yeah, it looks like, wow, everyone's about to exit. It's crazy that the race is still this close, even this far This has in. been the closest race we've had so far. Yeah, there were practice runs. There was one where Xarion was like, five minutes ahead. On world record pace. On world exactly. record pace in the practice room until Sylph. Reset twice, died once, still beat us. <laughs> still destroyed us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that Growlithe is hard to take out in one hit. 11 is one Carvest, yeah. 
11. Isn't speed? Zero? That's yellow. Wait, well, yeah, 11 speed is, is definitely it, zero. Yeah, it's zero in red. It's, it's one, one in yellow. yellow, yeah. It's yeah. zero in yellow, please. <laughs> 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 Don't listen to him. Yeah, so here's the shopping. This is actually a really interesting part of the run because this is where the 20 items kind of comes into play, and every item they buy will have a use. So he's picking up the Horn Drill TM, which is the most useful move in the game. A bunch of super appels and super potions. Super appels to avoid encounters, super potions to My heal. My tunnel. Oh yeah, I'll talk about this first actually. So Gunner does different movement in the tunnel. It saves two frames and he got it. So that's really hard actually for, you know, us normal people. <laughs> <laughs> two frames. Yeah. And I bonked. And he bonked, so there goes the two <laughs> frames. But you know, it did save those two frames at first. But yeah, back to the shopping. So he picked up a Pokey Doll, which he'll use for a skip. And then he'll pick up the Ice Beam and Rock Slide TMs. Both of those are extremely useful. And he'll talk to this girl to get those. It's kind of a staple of Pokemon runs where yeah, the shopping. You, you, you stock up. Yeah. You spend all the money that you've accumulated on things that help you in the run. Yeah. This is also the last time that any of the racers will be entering a mart or shopping, so... Probably. <laughs> well, yeah, very likely going to be the last time. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see, like, they're really going to be entering the Elite Four with, you know, super potions and one full restore. I could definitely see Kieser on needing to shop again. That's also true. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on luck, of course. But yeah, here's the most broken part, uh, the X items. And the way the X items work is you use one and it boosts your stat. So for example, you use an X speed and it increases your speed uh, by one factor. Uh, X special boosts your special and special defense because they're the same stat in generation one, which will be useful later. But then there's X accuracies. Oh yeah. And the reason why Nitto King is so good for the speed run is because of those. And X accuracies just remove the concept of missing from your Pokemon. After you use it, you cannot miss. And that becomes extremely broken, as we'll see fairly soon. Have we seen any uh, Gen 1 misses? I don't believe so. I don't think we Not have. Yet. I haven't heard the Pikachu yet, so no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that what you... Yep. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> if someone Gen 1 misses, the Always Pikachu will uh, scream. <laughs> Something else cool is all the runners will be selecting a different amount of X items. So you saw, I think, Xarion picked up six specials. Gunner's going to take five. Uh, Keyzron had some extra money, so he decided to, you know, max out on X items, which is always a good idea. So they're all kind of, you know, selecting different X items based off their stats. Keyzron was a little short yesterday, so he's... Yeah, he decided to stock up a bit. <laughs> he was actually doubly short because he, uh, he exceeded on the rival. <laughs> Why did I not get on my bike? I was too busy getting insulted. <laughs> Bunch of bullies up here. Yeah. Kizron, wasn't I uh, behind you when we went in the mart? Well, you see, <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I like yeah. throw my knee brace your way. <laughs> wow. So coming console. up is probably the coolest menu in the entire mm -hmm. run. And I'm going to try to explain it all, but it's going to be really hard. So if you look at Gunner and Kizron on screens, they're going to buffer to the ether, swap that for repels, and then teach horn drill, buffering up to it. They want to have the super repels in slot two because it's easier to access their second item rather than scrolling down all the time. That will pop them back to the top of their menu, so they'll take this time to use the repel they just swapped up and then swap their third item for the X accuracies, which is another item they'll be using a lot. So again, higher up in their menu. They'll teach Fly the Spiro, scroll up to teach Rock Slide, which they need for Rock Tunnel. This way they don't need to teach it before the Ghastly fight. And then following that, they will fly and end up in Lavender for the rival fight. I, I almost taught over Horn Drill. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. That's minutes. Yeah, yeah. So as you can see on Xarion's screen, Horn Drill is just finding its mark, despite being a 30% accurate move. And the reason for this is he is an X accuracy. And again, it just removes the concept of accuracy from his Pokemon. And as long as you're faster, Horn Drill will have a chance to hit, but with an X accuracy, it will also always hit. So because he was faster than all of his rival's Pokemon and he used an X accuracy and started spamming Horn Drill, it will never miss. So very easy fight, despite being somewhat scary uh, if you're at low health. 
It's really nice to see us spend such a huge chunk of time kind of investing into the later parts of the run and then see it instantly pay off with just a, a five-turn fight for five Pokemon, or six yeah. if you count the setup, but it, it's it's destructive. Yeah, Nidoking just tears through the late game. It's crazy to see. And this is where Nidoking gains its major advantage over, Blasto over Blastoise, whereas Blastoise is going to have its advantage in the early game, not having to stop for Nidoran and such, uh, and Water Gun early and whatnot. Yeah. But Nido King pulls ahead as a result of Horn Drill. Yeah, Horn Drill is just such a broken move. Blastoise has to wait until Fisher from the eighth gym before it gets its <laughs> one hit KO move, and even then, that takes a very long time. It's worth noting that Rock Slide is like kind of a way out, but it's not a great one. If only Nido King learned Dig, we wouldn't even have to deal with Rock Slide missing and whatnot. But... Yeah, it's silly that Nido King can learn things like Fire Blast, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, but you know, a ground type move Dig just can't be learned. Bubble Beam, Water Gun, it's all ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> On the topic of comparing to Blastoise, it's also worth noting that Fissure is a ground type one hit KO move. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work on flying types like Gyarados. And Blastoise just ends up not having good ways to deal with Gyaradoses. Gyarados is really just the wall for him. Yeah. You're using ice moves to deal with it. It's kind of a wall for Nido King too in some places, <laughs> but it's a lot easier to deal with. You just you... horn drill. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully we don't see any daily leaves oh, here. Oh, every time you say that. It's always, okay, at least he got Nightshade, so it's okay. okay. But, I, yeah, no, very yeah. happy for, to see Nightshade. Yeah, yeah. Um, those Ghastlies are terrifying. They have three scary moves, and Rock Slide is only 10% to miss, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. But it can be really scary if it misses, because you can get confused, you can get paralyzed. And uh, you see tricky healing because... Yeah, <laughs> in a race, if definitely. You, you, can, you can just die. Yeah, you can just miss Rock Slide and die, and there's nothing you can do. Yeah, top runners, when they're going for a world record, will just always red bar this section, so if you miss a Rock Slide, it can just be run over. Yeah. Given that I'm in last, I could have gone for it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, risk-reward is... I'm going to just keep it close, and then maybe come back. Yeah, yeah. Later on. I believe. So the runners are now stepping on the healing pad, uh, keys are on, and... Uh, Gunner, and that just heals their Pokemon to full health. So these next two Ghastlies won't be as scary because now they're back to full health. They're not weak uh, from the first couple fights. Yeah, but you might be forced to burn your full restore because you're not getting that heal pad again. You can't exactly. backtrack for it. So oh, full restore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keys are on with half the backtrack. Also uh, on Xarion's screen, I'll point it out when uh, Keys are on or Gunner gets there, mm. but. He did the first major skip of the run, which was the Pokedoll skip. You can actually skip the Marowak Ghost using the Pokedoll's intended feature of ending a battle. So he simply uses a Pokedoll, and that allows you to advance to the upper floor despite uh, not having the Sylph Scope, which would require a five minute detour through an extremely slow section of the run. So luckily we don't have to do that in this category. Slow, uninteresting, it's... it's the spinning pads. <laughs> yep. It's kind of funny to look at for, you know, 20, 30 seconds and then you realize I'm still spinning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here it comes. They're both going to do it at about the same time. So you'll see they just simply use the Pokédoll on the fade ends and they can move past it. Let's do a little item management too as we scroll down. Yeah. It's, it's nice to bring up items that they use often, so elixirs are one. You'll notice they picked up two elixirs here and one in the underground. One of the main drawbacks of Horn Drill is its PP. Uh, it only has five PP, and that makes it kind of a bad move to use because, you know, you use it five times, you can't use it until you go to a Pokemon Center, unless you have elixirs, ethers, or the max versions of each. And that kind of takes away that weakness because they're able to just use five horn drills on the fight, Elixir, have their horn drills back for the next fight. So that's one of the reasons why they're going out of their way to pick up so many of the PP restoring items. I think they pick up four of them total in this section. If any of us had good enough special, we could try to Thunderbolt this Golbat, but I'm pretty sure all of us No one's to... even close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if there's any time for donations, now's probably a yeah, good time. Good. These fights are fairly simple. All right, we have $100 from Tricky's parents. Oh. <laughs> Go extra tricky on Pokemon Red. <laughs> so there's some encouragement Thank for you, you Tricky. <laughs> yeah. We have $100 from Graham Licka Cracka. <laughs> Good luck to all the runners, and may your Nido King be as mighty as RNG permits. <laughs> 
We have $25 from James Ferdon. Here's a question. If the animals can fly an escape pod, why can't they open a door? So this donation is to kill the incredibly lazy animals. <laughs> we have $65 from Chef's Riz. I always look forward to AGDQ and SGQ every year. Keep on destroying those games. All right, so coming up, uh, Xarion is still in the lead, so he'll be healing in Celadon. And the reason for that is his hub is currently set to Cerulean, but they never need to go back there. But they'll need to go to Celadon multiple times, so it's really nice to heal at the center there and just be able to go there all the time. It's so central, and it kind of leads everywhere, so... Yeah. One of my favorite fights is on Tricky's screen as well. It seems really silly, but using Horn Drill for this fight actually saves a lot of time. These two Pokemon are very hard to kill, and because they have Horn Drills and they have to heal anyway, they may as well use them. I mean, you got it too. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't deserve it. That oh, Thrash thanks, is man. fairly unlikely <laughs> to kill the Eradicate, and they both <laughs> got it, so it was kind of silly to well, see my that. Nido King earned it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. It's just, it's crazy how close they are right now. <laughs> And Tricky's one fight behind, and Ixarion's yep. only one fight ahead. But yeah, this fight, they usually choose to Thunderbolt the Radita, which you'll see Tricky do after the Zubat. And uh, even though there's only three Pokemon after, and, you know, Thrash lasts three to four turns, it is not guaranteed that the Radicate goes down. So that's why he'll use Thrash, just to, you know, mitigate that chance of getting confused. It would save just a few frames to use Thrash on uh, the Rattata instead yeah. of on the Radicate. And the forcing a four-turn thrash is a risk that's worth more than uh, a few frames to avoid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it looks like everyone got the range, except I don't think Xarion got it. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> yeah. All right, Justice. so welcome to Cycling Road. <laughs> this is, again, one of the two points in the game where you could really take your hands off the controller and stretch out. It's like a really input-intensive game, but it's not so much like, you know, frame perfect inputs and whatnot. It's mostly just you have to be pressing buttons all the time. Also, wake up the dang Snorlax keys are on. Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, that flute is horrible when I hear your games, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's at Wait, the same you, time. You're hearing everyone's games? I'm hearing yours. <laughs> oh. I was like, wow, this is peaceful. <laughs> I was even going to say something. <laughs> It almost puts you to sleep instead of waking yeah. you up. It's crazy. It's worth noting that the Poke Flute can actually be used to wake your Pokemon up in battle from the sleep status. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of people, people don't know, know that. that. Yeah. <laughs> There's one point in the run where that might happen. Yeah. Hopefully not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So another and thing to notice. I take the lead. Oh yeah. <laughs> another thing to notice is you can actually press the B button to stop on Cycling Road. And it's actually really useful when you're going for that rare candy because a lot of people don't know and they just kind of YOLO it. But uh, you can actually just hold the B button. And did everyone pick up the PP up or is everyone planning We're to? We're all getting it, I think. Did, yeah. Xarya, did you take the PP up? He yes. is five okay. attack. Oh, yeah. he is five attack, <laughs> yeah. So everyone will be taking the PP up. Uh, you can actually opt to do a different PP management route without using the PP up. But having that one extra horn drill matters in a lot of places, specifically on Lorelei. Her Jinx could live and it will almost always one hit KO you right back. So uh, it's very useful to pick up that PP up for the extra horn drill. But unfortunately, it's kind of a bad menu because they literally have to scroll down, use it, and then it kind of wastes that scroll. So you'll see that here possibly. No, but it doesn't really matter when they decide to use it. They just need to use it at some point, uh, at least before they get to surf. So they'll be using it in the safari zone. But during a repel menu makes the most sense. Yeah, it, it saves also, like a frame. Yeah, and it resets your cursor back to bike, which is slightly faster too. Yep. So yeah, welcome to the Safari Zone, uh, where you get 30 balls to catch Pokemon. Something interesting about yellow is if you have less than $500, you can actually enter here. But in red, you need $500. So it's technically possible to softlock in Pokemon Red version only. Uh, if you defeat every trainer, sell every item in the game, and then also... Uh, you know, get rid of all your money, and then you wouldn't be able to enter the Safari Zone. We have $200 from the skill floor. Pallet swapping, <laughs> poke racing, fractions. <laughs> this run has everything. <laughs> <laughs> also, Keyzron had to pick up that full restore because he had to burn his much earlier. 
it's really nice to just be able to pick one up three steps out of your way and it doesn't cost too much time but as you can see gunners pulled ahead a little bit because of it oh i was already ahead <laughs> <laughs> I can let you live it down. You better catch him. It's okay. I'll make up a few seconds at the end of the game. Well, after the end of the game for having shorter Hall of Fame. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Three Pokemon strats. Yeah. Those gold teeth are also really awkward to grab. I, the movement's really weird for me. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Worst safari ever. So yeah. Safari Zone they have to go through because they need Surf and Strength. And it's also nice they can grab a few things while they're in here, but none of them needed the Carbos because all of them have good speed, surprisingly. Or good enough speed, rather. This is also, if you look at Uxarion's screen, it's the first example of an optional trainer battle. And the reason they're fighting this rocket, uh, he has one Pokemon, so it's not too difficult to get through it. But he's also guarding three extremely useful items. The Carbos, not so much because, again, they have the good speed. But he's guarding a rare candy and the Earthquake TM, and Stab Earthquake from Nidoking is extremely powerful. Uh, stab standing for same type attack bonus. When your Pokemon uses a move that it shares a type with, for example, Nidoking is ground and Earthquake is ground, it gets a 1.5 multiplier to the damage. So extremely useful, and they'll be using that a lot throughout the run. Did you YOLO? I didn't see. I did not. Oh, I did. I could oh. not. I could not allow Kizaron to overtake me for something so silly. Thanks, man. <laughs> but he did. He did. He did yolo. He got you up a little bit. Respect. Yeah, there, you can yolo that uh, <laughs> that menu. We, you just hold down and you press A as soon as you get to 10F, and it saves a very little amount of time. And if you <laughs> miss, you go to the wrong floor. And negligible. It's silly. Yeah, but it's cool to go for it. Did I thrash? I got the PP up. <laughs> Neat. Well, there goes another turn for Keyzrat. Right. You do now have the uh, X Act for a later fight, though, in case you mess up or something. It's actually crazy that no one's getting Carbus. Like, it's very different oh, from yeah. our from our other runs. Yeah, the race yesterday, I think everyone needed to get multiple Carbos, and then now, well, except of course Xarion, but <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's picking them up. They also need to teach Earthquake right away because they have exactly 20 items right now. And again, item management is everything. So they're going to be, again, switching some more useful items up to the top of their menu and teaching Surf before they teach Earthquake. And the reason for that is if you teach Surf, it doesn't pop your cursor back to the top because you can't use up an HM. But if you teach Earthquake first, it would put your cursor back to the top. So it's useful to, uh, you know, teach Surf first, saves a little bit of menuing. So Tricky also opted not to horn drill the Machoke. Uh, was there any reason for that? Uh, well, since we're not doing the risky strat in Sylph, we want to be taking damage. And so uh -huh. thrashing the Machoke means that we're more likely to take damage. It can be a problem <laughs> yes. for sure to not take enough damage. Yeah. My HP DV was really high. I'm, I'm sweating the damage a bit. Too. <laughs> It's also pretty nice that right after they get Earthquake, they get an Arbok, which just goes down to Earthquake. So it's pretty nice that you pick it up and it immediately finds its use. One of my favorite things about seeing this game speedrun is everyone has really specific style differences. So you'll notice Gunner and really all the racers have different move orders and mm -hmm. it saves frames. There's, I forget what the move order is and it depends on your stats even, but there's optimal move orders, but it messes with your muscle memory so much that everyone just has a move order and sticks with it. The so. time that you save for like memorizing oh. every optimal move order. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. So Fred Bar. Pidge, Pidget Red Bar. Wow. That is something. Yeah, that's going to save a lot of time, but it's also uh, a It's little not going to save much because I'm going to have to heal. Yeah, right. okay. He'll heal it off just to, you know, avoid the risk. It's funny. We we do try to get Red Bar on that fight, but not from the Pidget. Yeah, exactly. There's a strategy to let the Gyarados put you into Red Bar, but you don't want to do that in a race. To say the least. Yeah, definitely. So this is another situation. You noticed uh, all the runners walked up a step before going to the rival. This is because the rival, again, walks with quite a uh, bit of swagger. And if you go a tile lower, he would have to walk all the way around you to get to the teleport pad. And watching him walk five steps is so slow. Thank you, Pidget. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, that's, that's actually a, pretty good help. Yeah. I mean, we're a little scared of Hypno, but... Yeah, a little bit. But yeah, they need to take some damage here. They need to be lower health when they get to Koga's gym. But again, not too low or it's scary. 
So I am going to risk the next fight against Giovanni. If I get uh, critical, then I wipe and I have to go all the way back here, but it's, it saves quite a bit of time to keep this red bar for a few more fights, and it's very unlikely that I get it's, crit. It's so unlikely to die yeah. from that. I, I don't blame you. It's like 40% he even gets attacked, and then also a 10% on top of that that a critical occurs, and the moves can even miss, so it's and maybe can, 4%. Uh, uh, it's just so. <laughs> yeah, it's it would be crazy to see it happen, but, you know, this is Generation 1, and it's a race, so... Like, Hopefully a runner of any skill level during a real, you know, red attempt would never heal there. Oh, yeah. yeah I would actually want to be at lower health if this was an attempt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, here's the Giovanni fight. He's not super scary, but, again, because Xarion is at such low health, this could be a pretty scary fight. This Nidoran gets one chance to attack, or Nidorino, and if it chooses an attacking move and criticals, he'll faint. But Guard spec. Yeah, hopefully... Okay, okay, focus energy. <laughs> so again, same thing, nothing we, happens. We take this. Yeah. <laughs> and this is again where move management comes into play. You'll notice he's going to run out of horn drills here after he horn drills the Kangaskhan and the Nidoqueen. Queen. And then later on, he'll run out of Earthquakes and then use an Elixir. The move, uh, like PP management, is extremely tight throughout this run. And you'll see that in a few places. There will be points where we have like zero earthquakes, zero horn drills. Yeah. It's all it's it's very well put together and cool to see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if there's any more donations, this is another good time. All right, I've got ten dollars from Pariah eleven sixty five. Said caught a Taurus at a gas station and he told me to give ten dollars. <laughs> so there you go, magic gas bowl. <laughs> we got a hundred dollars from Anonymous who just says Pokemon Blue hype. We got $15 from PK Patriot. Always love seeing Pokemon at a GDQ. Now let's see even more. We got $50 from Flemlazoid. I haven't missed donating at a GDQ for a few years now, and I had absolutely no plan on messing SGDQ this year. Thanks to everyone for your efforts and for a great cause. Yeah, so coming up on the next fight for Xarion is going to be the Hypno fight, and he's definitely going to be healing before it. Um, it is far too scary to enter that on 24 health, but in normal like PB attempts, he would be entering it on extremely low health because he needs to save time. But again, keeping the red bar is too risky, despite it saving as much time as it does. Yeah, I, I probably saved 25 seconds. Yeah, just, yeah, just in those, there. what, three fights, four fights? And then healing is going to be an extra six seconds, so... Yeah. Still net time save and pretty significant time save as well. Yeah, this is another place you can just kind of dig out of a building, as you'll see from uh, Keyser on the Gunner. It's pretty silly, but... Oh, that critical is a little scary for Tricky. He's also going to have to heal before the Hypno fight now, most likely. What you can dig out of is also strangely inconsistent. Some gems you can dig out of, some gems you can't. Yeah, so Koga's is one that you can't, but Sabrina, Blaine, you can. I think those are the only two, actually. I don't know. Yeah, It'd maybe. Be, like, you can probably dig out a Brock's gem. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> All right, so here's the scary fight for Xarion, but since he healed, it won't be as bad. The Hypno coming up will live unless he gets a critical hit. And the Hypno has both Confusion and Headbutt, and also two moves that don't do anything. So hopefully you just don't see Confusion, because if that critical is, you are going to die. His stats are bad enough to where wow. disabled. Wow, there and you he go. He critical the Hypno, no, so no, that no. will take it out in one hit. You have to have really bad stats. Yeah. yeah. Uh, at level 40. Yeah. So this is the Koga fight. Koga is actually somewhat scary in this run. Uh, his Weezing has self-destruct, but... Luckily, uh, that shouldn't really matter because everything just dies in one hit to Earthquake or Horn Drill. Yeah, it looks like Gunner and Keys are about to approach the scary Hypno fight as well. And Tricky's just behind them. So again, this is still ridiculously close for how far in we are. Something else that you'll see is they're using a Rare Candy early, and that's just part of the experience planning, so they'll both use it here. And it's really nice to get level 40 for the Hypno because it just goes down a lot easier, again, due to the rounding, uh, a level ending in zero. All right. So here comes the Hypno fight. Yeah. 
Oh, is that self destruct? Is that self destruct? It is. That's actually. Wait, can you lift that? Oh, oh critical. Oh, that's actually really bad. Well, he won. At least he won. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's crazy. Can you recover that? Yeah, can you recover from that? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Drop my balls. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, I guess you have rare candies. That might help because you could, <laughs> you know, hit level 43 as well. But yeah, now the other two racers are fighting Koga. And... <laughs> this is where you might start to get a little suspicious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this is actually a uh, fairly recent addition to the run. And it's actually the addition to the run that pushed Nidoking over the edge for who is the fastest Pokemon to run Gen 1 with. Uh, for the longest time, it was Blastoise. Uh, Nidoking started to catch up, and now Nidoking is just the faster and more consistent Pokemon. And the reason for that is after Exarion uses these rare candies you'll see his Nidoking will go up to a very, very small amount of health, and he will be at this very, very small amount of health for pretty much the remainder of the game, uh, keeping Red Bar through multiple gym fights, uh, some Elite Four members and whatnot. And having that Red Bar, again, it saves so much time. Uh, it's almost, I think, a minute and a half to two minutes compared to not having it. Nice. Okay, good. They both died. So yes, you're you're you actually want to die here. Yeah. You if you live, it's actually bad because then you have more health and uh, you know having more health puts you out of red bar earlier. So dying is actually the best way that that fight can go. And you see, Koga's just like make space for this child yeah. instead of like ten thousand years ago, toxic was passed down from my ancestors. I mean, he's really into it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's because their bag is full, so they don't get gym leader TMs, and that's the main reason that their uh, inventory management has been the way it is. Whoops, I didn't candy. <laughs> oh, so you'll just have to menu an extra time. There's some weird menus in this game. They, some of them seem somewhat unoptimal, but they are, and <laughs> they can be kind of weird. Uh, and that's one of those kind of strange menus, and it was I actually like this one new. coming up here when you get the carbots. Oh yeah, this one's kind of weird. You just repel and then scroll all the way down. But yeah, he'll take the time now to teach strength. You can see on the Xarion screen, and that's again, you want to teach strength when you're low, and then use the thing that'll put you back higher. Almost something candied Spiro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's something scary that can happen because sometimes when you'll like teach a move or you'll use a move like fly or dig, so, you'll put your cursor over that Pokemon and then you'll go to use an item on Nidoking and you'll be over the Pokemon you just tried to <laughs> use a move with. Like you might think one level isn't that big of a deal, but I mean that's the difference between being faster than an Alkazam or not being faster and it's yep. very, very bad. Yeah, exactly. Not outspeeding the Alkazams is terrifying. That's pretty much the whole reason you want speed is where yeah. are the Alkazams? I want to be faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are the Alakazams? Yeah. That's right. There's some. So yeah, everyone's answering the Pokemon Mansion. They need the secret key to access Blaine's gym, but there's also two rare candies hidden in here, pretty much right next to each other. And those are extremely beneficial because they're able to just use them right away and hit level 45, which will allow them to outspeed finally uh, Sabrina's Alakazam. There is a strat with amazing speed <laughs> where you can actually skip those candies and it's amazing, but it's not marathon friendly at all. Yeah, definitely not. But yeah, you would go into the later game at level 43 instead of the 45, and it only saves, you saw how little time it took to use those candies. So this is another point where normally you would see different gym orders, but I think everybody's doing the same order because I think everyone had bad special. Did anyone have a good enough uh, special? Well, keys can do something different. Yeah, keys can do something. Okay, I didn't see keys, keys are on special, but... The rest of us don't have good enough speed for it. Okay. Yeah, we have to do Sabrina last. Yeah, so you can do early Sabrina if you have really good speed, and that'll get you some extra levels for the other two fights, but... Uh, Move or uh, gym order here is kind of just dependent on stats. So you'll see both Gunner, Exerion, and Tricky doing Blaine, then Erica, then Sabrina. Uh, Keyzron can kind of decide his gym order based off what he's feeling. He'll probably do Sabrina second and uh, then. Hello? <laughs> and then Erica third so that he can use Ice Beam on Erica's Pokemon rather than Earthquake. Yeah, this is kind of another good time for donations. They're just going to be kind of going through the boss rush at this point. All right, we have $80 from Roosh. Good luck, Exarion, on your run. 
I hope all you others gun for victory, and may the extra tricky game decide not to perform any shenanigans. Wait, did I pick up the secret key? Oh, God, did I pick up? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I did. <laughs> you can keep going. I always think I don't, but then, like, I did. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then one time I didn't. Oh, no, I did. Oh, no. I actually didn't. Wow. Oh, no. So yeah, that's actually really oh, costly. He hurts. has to go back through Remember Pokemon Mansion. Remember five seconds ago, you were ahead of me. Yeah. Oh, poor Gunner. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh! It feels so good, you fraud. That also cost him a, a super repel, so he's gonna have to opt not to repel later. I'm so sad. Yeah, that's actually a big mistake, but. I mean, this is so Pokemon Red. He I was so excited. I'm like, I taught strength. I remembered, finally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you probably couldn't hear with the headphones, but someone's telling you to reset. <laughs> but yeah, I remember there was a race where Montebank went from, I think, first to, like, sixth because he just didn't pick up the secret key. So it happens. Something else kind of cool that you'll see on Keyser on screen now is as he goes up to the question boxes, he will be answering no to, for example, this question, but he's pressing B so he doesn't have to scroll down. Even though it looks like he's saying yes, he's actually just saying no. So you can press the B button to advance through those slightly faster. But it's time for our favorite question coming up. Not this one, but the next one. I should answer yes. I mean, it would give Gunner a chance to catch up a bit. You don't want to do that. It messes up your <laughs> XP. Oh, that's actually true. Okay, they need to be very split. careful with their experience routing, and be, that'll be, again, because of the Alakazams. You'll see that in a little bit. But here comes Tombstoner. And sadly, TM28 does not contain Tombstoner. So their Gunner can finally enter the gym now, and... It kind of seems silly, but these questions take a very long time, and that's why even though they're both in the gym at the same time, uh, Keys does still have quite a significant advantage. Yeah, so the reason we do um, Erica later is uh, Blaine gives nice. us the special badge boost. Uh, Shen referenced the attack boost from Brock earlier, uh, and Blaine gives the special boost, so now we can one-hit all of Erica's Pokemon with Ice Beam, and that allows us to conserve Earthquakes. Uh, plus, uh, Ice Beam has the Shake animation instead of the Flash. Uh, so you save a couple seconds there. Yeah. I'm doing Erica first because I like the, the overall movement is a little bit better if you do Erica first or last. And so I'll be using Earthquake, which loses a few seconds, but with the PP up, the uh, I have plenty of moves to get everything. Yeah, so you can kind of determine your strategy in the later game and the gym order just based off, you know, whatever situation you're in. So good special, you'll usually just do Erica first. Um, bad special, you'll do Blaine, then Erica usually. And it's kind of cool just seeing like all the different strategies and everyone being at different points just because of that. Yeah, coming up for Keys and then right after Xarion is normally the scariest gym leader, but after discovering the Carbo strategy, it became a lot easier. And that is Sabrina. There is still something that can go wrong that we haven't seen yet this race. <laughs> and I'm saying it because, you know, Keyzeron's going there. But Thanks, man. <laughs> it really helps. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but you can Gen 1 miss, which we've alluded to but never seen. But there's a 1 in 256 chance that any move can just miss. And if it happens, it can lose a lot of time based off where it occurs. But yeah, again, the X accuracy just removes the concept of accuracy, so you can't Gen 1 miss if it happens. Yeah, um, but then, <laughs> of course, you can't X accuracy on this fight because you could just die. And hopefully we see it from Tricky. We saw it from Keyzeron, or yeah, it was Keyzeron that had it, but Blaine can actually Super Potion on, it, on his first turn, and because they're going to be using an X accuracy followed by Horn Drill, uh, they actually want to have Blaine use the Super Potion because then he won't use Agility, which will allow them to stay faster. And it's kind of silly that he Super Potions despite his Pokemon being at full health. You can't use a potion normally when your Pokemon's at full health, but you know, Blaine can, so that's kind of cool. It doesn't matter too much for me specifically because I've already used three of my six Horn Drills, so I need to Earthquake something anyway. Yeah. 
But normally you want to horn drill the Growlithe because you're trying to either save your Earthquakes or you're trying to save a little bit of time because it is slow to see agility twice. So hopefully we see it from Tricky. It is only a 25% chance, but uh, it can happen, of course. Yeah, I maybe, always... maybe some donations? Yeah, perhaps. not to say. All right. We've got $200 from Andrew F. I took a break from running around in Pokemon Go to catch this Pokemon Red Race. <laughs> it totally wasn't because I needed to charge my phone. Oh, why did I dig there? <laughs> Stuck there. We've got $50 from Batera. Been waiting all week for the Pokemon run. Good luck, trainers. Gotta catch them. Or I suppose mm. you won't. <laughs> and so we, we did see the super potion yeah, from Blaine. Yeah, but so. unfortunately it was on turn two. Yeah. <laughs> so he didn't save time, but it was kind of cool to see it. And then now we see Exarion entering Giovanni's gym, which is the last gym leader. And you may think it would be faster to just, you know, hit the spinning tiles and fight the trainers. But if you've played Gen 1, you know how slow those things are. We avoid those at all costs. Um, so he'll be even going in the gym, fighting the two trainers, walking all the way out of the gym to reload their positions, and then walking all the way back in. That is still faster than going on those tiles. So it's just crazy how much how much slower they really are. Wiggly woo. Wiggly woo. Shout out to Wind Sunrise <laughs> 1. Yeah. Wins is a uh, an older runner, but he's a Yu-Gi-Oh streamer now. Yeah, exactly. Cool guy, but Wiggly Woo is his thing. <laughs> we so, have a fifty dollar donation from a few good taters that just says Wiggly Woo. <laughs> <laughs> good timing. So Xarian's now on actually one of the scariest fights in the game. You might think that while well, they're going through four gyms in Red Bar, and they're fighting two Elite Four members in Red Bar, and their rival fight, but the fight that can really kill you is the one you see on his screen, the random black belt in Giovanni's gym. So it's kind of silly that this fight is one of the hardest in the game, but it is, and luckily it went really well. Yeah, the, the move you don't want to see is Karate Chop, because that has a very high critical rate so he's about 70% to critical, and that will kill you from red bar. Yeah, and if you die there, you have to watch your whole team wipe, or of course you can save before the fight and then try it again. But yeah, if there's any more donations, this is a good time. I just wanted to explain that fight a little bit. All right. We've got $15 from Essentia. My six-year-old daughter recently finished her first Pokemon game, Pokemon Y. She says that Pokemon Red looks different, but still nice, and she <laughs> wants to play it someday. Don't speed run it. I really <laughs> hope she wasn't referring to Tricky's video over there. <laughs> <laughs> I think she had some sunglasses on, so she was okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one more thing really quick to point out is when Gunner's about to dig from Sabrina's gym, he's actually gonna walk to the teleporter pad before he digs. And what's really cool about that is it takes the animation from the teleporter pad instead of the dig animation. So it saves a few frames to just walk to the teleporter and then use that animation to dig. It's kind of interesting and saves a little bit of time. And for some strange reason, Exarian failed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like 12 frames. Yeah. Yeah, if there's any more donations, again, this is a good time. They're doing kind of the final fights here. All right, we got $50 from Anonymous who says, the nostalgia is too strong. Time to go dig out the Game Boy. <laughs> and we have $100 from Jack saying, first year attending SGDQ. Shoutouts to all the runners. I had an amazing time. And we have $50 from Art House Mafia. When I was a kid, the nice lady at Toys R Us sold me Pokemon Red one day before the official launch date. Needless to say, the next day I was the coolest kid in school. <laughs> great memories about a great game. Good luck, runners. We got $50 from Dr. Maggot. Can't believe it's the last day of SGQ already. Thanks to all the runners, organizers, announcers, and behind the scenes people that made this event happen. A great cause and always entertaining. So I think this fight is really cool. What I'm going to do is use an X special, which gives me an extra badge boost on my attack. Uh, and then uh, also, also raises my special. So that'll help me Earthquake the Machokes and Ice Beam the Machop. Yeah, unfortunately, he got the Karate Chop critical, which it happens sometimes. And that's just one way to die. Less than 15%. 
Yeah, than exactly. So something interesting on Agzarion's screen as he does the rival fight, he's going to use an X special here. Uh, he is not faster than the Alakazam, but after using the X special, he will be. And using an X special also gives him a chance to one hit the Pidgeot, which he did. So now he will be faster than the Alakazam unless he resets his badge boosts. And this is one of the reasons that the experience is so carefully routed. He's going to level up as soon as he defeats the Alakazam. If he leveled up before it, he would just die to the Alakazam because it would just kill him or have a very high chance to. But now he'll keep the badge boost all the way to the Alakazam, which is coming out next, and he'll just one-shot it with Earthquake. So really cool how that works out, but it does. And then here's the level up. And the reason he needs to use the X Accuracy is he needs to use one of his horn drills on the Venusaur. And he has no moves that would one hit the Venusaur unless he's set up to like plus three or something ridiculous. So yeah, and even if you do set up, um, you'll do less damage with the critical. And mm -hmm. so you'd be hoping you don't crit. And if you do, you could die. Yeah. Yeah, that fight has so. all kinds of really cool stat manipulation. And then on to the Elite Four. So again, this is a good time for some donations. All right, I've got $30 from Facepalm Tree, who says, my favorite Pokemon is Eevee, but I have a question for the runners. Who's your favorite Pokemon? In order. <laughs> Articuno. Uh, it's nice order. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one spoke up. <laughs> mine, mine is Espeon. Mine is also Espeon. Not creative at all. Shiny, pink, female, Weavile. The comeback. <laughs> I like uh, Spinda when it's pure red. It's like <laughs> one in a few trillion, but you know. Didn't save Crit the Ride on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so cool Perfect. to have the tricky there. Yeah, critting that Ride on is one of the few ways that you can save time on Giovanni. All of his Pokemon just go down in one hit, but the Ride on. But of course, the Ride on can't really damage you back because of, again, uh, good AI, which I don't think we've explained yet. The way that uh, good AI works is some trainers, for example, uh, Misty or the survival fight that they're about to go to, have good AI, which means they will always select a move that is super effective against you if they have it. So this Pidgeot, for example, has agility, which is psychic type, and it looks at your Nidoking and says, oh, Nidoking is poison ground, so psychic moves are super effective against it. So it will always use agility because it thinks it's hitting you with a super effective move. But what's unfortunate for the rival is agility spam is useless, and he gives us plenty of time to beef up the Nido King and, you know, wipe his team with it. So there's a few places that uh, good AI will be extremely beneficial, and a few that it's kind of scary. So, for example, Misty will always use water moves against Nido King, despite having tackle. But uh, if it would use tackle, it would be a very good turn because you would take almost no damage from that compared to other moves. And. The last fight in the game uh, that the AI really matters is Lance, which we'll see in a little bit, but that's where good AI is a bad thing. So, Xarian, are we going to see any swag boulders from you? You will not. I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a two-frame trick called swag bouldering. It's really interesting, and the way it works is when you hit a boulder, you have two frames to turn up or down. And if you do, your character will turn, and the boulder dust I'm dead. particle. Oh, Oof. maybe. Oh no. So you. it's it's actually funny because I was like setting a timer on my phone to see like if I could maybe make up the time on Kizaron oh, no. by Yoloing. <laughs> well then, how'd that work out for <laughs> you? Oh no. It's yeah. okay. I'll do it for you. <laughs> Just don't let keys no. get second. I'll do oh. it on the last boulder. Okay. I'm not yeah. good on this one. Again, with swag bouldering, it just puts the dust particles in the direction you're facing. And the game didn't expect you to be able to turn your character up or down while the boulder's being pushed. So it just puts the dust particles in that direction. It's really cool. So keys will do it on the last boulder. And unfortunately, you don't get revives. I just one miss. Oh my god. There it is. No, Wait. that's not a Gen 1 no, miss. No, that's what is, what is that? No, no, no. So, okay. Zero damage. Yeah, mm. you're doing zero damage. The way it works is if you're using a move that is 4x oh. not very effective. I've just never done it. On a significantly weaker Pokemon. Can he oh, not you're, kill me? No, I'm you're soft-locked soft until you... Oh, oh, my God. 
When's okay, the last so time we're just you gonna saved? we're just gonna kill him. Uh, since our strats. Oh my god. Wow. You have to get to struggle and then. I didn't even save for death. black belt, so. Oh my god. Neat. We're gonna be here for a bit for Gunner. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, if you had Paris, this would be really nice. So that uh, <laughs> two ten estimates looking really good now, huh? No, yeah. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. No, well, he can potion, so. Paris, what? Oh. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna remember. get the potion. You're gonna have to oh, run to struggle yeah. and then struggle to death. You can do it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my. It's a good thing it's not a forest story here. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he'll get one. Does lucky. he only get one? No. He's, he's got one potion here. Oh, he does. But only the champion have one? has one forest star. For yeah. some reason, they gave this uh, rival fight the same trainer class as like the second one. Yeah, yep. exactly. So he only has a potion, luckily. So. He'll have to deal 20 extra damage instead of the full Venusaur health. Okay, I didn't pull a mum full. You want to talk I about did actually. Way? Oh no, Cut has a chance to miss too. No. Yeah. I always forget that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here comes Keyser on attempting a swag boulder. What's that? I mean, Will I might as well it? at this point in time. Yeah. He's got some time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there it is. So you can see the dust particles kind of go up. It's really cool. It's it's not too difficult once you practice it, but it looks really cool as you do it. You can go up or down. Let's see if he tries one down. <laughs> I was just to try and get Gunner to catch up. There, there he go. is. Yeah. Ooh. You can see it only has the one little kind of corner tile when you do it downwards. It's kind of neat. All right. So here comes the potion, probably. Unless he gets really lucky and doesn't That's see the potion. That's never happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will have to max ether. <laughs> the oddish. Because otherwise I'd have to burn through every one of my uh, my absorbs. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, this will also mess up his experience, but I don't know how much that will matter. It shouldn't matter too much. I I am a little scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably be a level lower for the Gyarados, so it might do a little bit of extra damage compared Are to what you're used to. It depends on if you die. <laughs> Not gonna see in time. Yeah, so if you look at keys are on screen. Max ether cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. If you look at uh keys are on screen, it is. he's doing a yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the potion. But Cheater. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's sacrificing his Spiro to the Lorelei, which might seem kinda silly. And the reason for that is as I say the before good AI. Wait, what? Oh my uh oh. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Um I'm short. No, you're not. Yeah. Wait, you have five drills. No, no, I'm short X. in accuracy. So oh. you have to just probably full reserve well, for Bruno. And he, but yeah. he used one to save two seconds on Koga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in chat, what level am I going to get from this? Oh, boy. <laughs> I actually think I know. Uh, <laughs> what is it, shenanigans? I'm almost sure it's 18. 18? That sounds about right. 17 or 18. Man. Yeah. Probably 18. How much damage can Bruno do? Uh, like 35. A lot. Oh, I'm just super. He has nice. ice punch. I would four restore since Agatha anyway. Well, I, I think it actually. Well, he he only has the one full restore too. It would have been really close if I actually went back and did it all again, but this is way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was more fun before. Yeah. <laughs> My hand kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Venusaur is almost gone. Oh, you have three stars. Uh, oh. One more. One more. I think it might be one more, yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah, one oh. more. That's what I thought. This is it. This, this is, is it, it right here. This is it. There yeah. It is. yeah. Oh, 17. 17. <laughs> hey, Sunspore. Hey. <laughs> that would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What do I even yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get encounters unless I go back, I guess. Huh? Because my repel, right? Or does it still work if he's dead? Oh, yeah, it, still it works, works if he's dead. Oh, wow. Well, oh, wow. Well. <laughs> it would have been really funny if after all that you hit an Friendly optional. Friendly reminder, he's tied for the record. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Keyzeron didn't have an extra X accuracy, so he's going to have to do a slightly different strategy on Blaine. He opted to use it to save two seconds on Koga, but he kind of mismanaged how many he had. But this happens occasionally. Yeah, so there he goes. That critical on the Hitmonlee actually mattered. Or actually, no, it didn't because you X special, right? Yep. Because I bought too many of oh, those. That repel. <laughs> that repel yeah, on that the was last nice. tile. That was really close. 
Yeah, he needed to heal at some point, but going back to heal was just safer, I guess, in case he hit an optional or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oddish is a lot stronger now. <laughs> yeah, Am I gonna die? Uh, no, you won't die. You shouldn't. Yeah. That should kill. Oh, okay. okay. XFN. We did it. That Yay. was close. So yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> These are the top runners right. of this game. <laughs> Go us! So have we decided when time is? Is it on A Defeated Day? It's on A Defeated yeah. Day. Or whatever you decide to name. So uh, so this is actually the Lance fight, and it's really the last scary fight in the run. So the last time you'll see a save. And also some healing. The Lance's Gyarados will always use Hydro Pump because it's the only super effective move against Nidoking. So he'll use that. And if you don't set up an X special, you will die to Hydro Pump, but if you do set up an X Special, you will live it, barely. And you need to use an X Special because none of your moves will one-hit the Gyarados back, so he needs to set up an X Special so that Thunderbolt will knock it out. So it just makes sense to do it this way. So hopefully he just does not get critical by the Hydro Pump, but he does prefer if it hits. Hydro Pump can also miss, but getting hit by it will put him in Red Bar, and I All think right. that's three races three in a row <laughs> that he's gotten Hydro Pump miss. So that's Don't pretty crazy. Yeah, so really safe, but you know, it is slower. Meanwhile, Key's Agatha is happening. This is terrible. Yeah, this fight can go so badly. I'm not even going for the freeze because I use so many ice beams on. <laughs> right, yeah, he needs to save four for Lance. I was planning to do an extremely risky Agatha, but I came out of red bar so now because I never took damage. So now it's not worth it. Yeah. So again, red bar management can kind of make you determine what strategies you're going to use, and you know that's one way they could choose to do it. This is still going to be a really close race for second if we get a good Agatha, or if you know someone dies to Lance. Yep. Meanwhile, Gunner's odd. Or maybe is, we'll uh, all die to Lance and Gunner gets second. Yeah. Who I'm knows? Pa I'm, I'm, pull I'm pulling for you, buddy. I'm packing a a much more versatile team at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he also has stun spore. Which exactly. I was about to say, do you have stun spore? <laughs> I know for a fact he doesn't. <laughs> he has Paris. So yeah, here comes the Lance fight for Keys. It went pretty well for Xarion, though he would prefer Hydro Pump hitting. Uh, but so now he doesn't have to save for the champion. There's a four percent chance that I die here, and if I do, then Keys will pull ahead. Yeah, Good. because I didn't save for this fight. Oh, if Keys wins, oh no, the world will riot. If if that happens, I will cry. Thanks, man. <laughs> Let it be known that this has happened multiple times on like world record pace. Is mm -hmm. get the sky attack critical here? Yeah. It has to be sky attack turn one. It Let's... has to crit. It it has a chance oh, to miss. Right. It also to has to either. miss. Oh there my go. god! If no, it happens, dude. no, dude. Oh, not like that. Please. Come on, come on, come on. Shot, please, not, not no. Like this. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. So Xarion wins. <sighs> <laughs> just he just presses A. I wanted that emote so bad. <laughs> Badly. Yeah, so on the race, I decided to uh, put on the line one of my sub emotes. So Xaria now gets to make one for me or tell me what to make it of. But yeah. That could have been so bad. That was close. Every time. <laughs> Every time it matters, you get it. Yeah. And at least I'm also, not Also, time the bike. for Xarion is coming up as soon as it says uh, A defeated A at the end of the fight, so uh, I'll say time when it happens. That's single segment, yeah? Yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that was a really clean run. Especially given the stats. Yeah. Having decent speed just makes so much of a difference in a race, like not dying to Sabrina. Yeah, like exactly. If any of us had really bad speed, we would have had to set up an X speed on Sabrina, and it's a 40% chance to die. Yeah. You have to set up on the Mr. Mime, and it has Reflect, what? which makes you two hit it. What? Oh boy. Oh what? my god. What? Okay, well. Get him, Trippy! You had bad special. All right. <laughs> time. So, yeah, it's like time. And yeah, time. Sorry. <laughs> right there. <laughs> I was excited by Keezer on possibly not getting second. Oh, this is close. <laughs> yeah, this is extremely close for second now. Um, so, yeah, this Lance fight here will probably determine what happens. I think. They I think Keys has a better red bar setup, so yeah. he might have a slight advantage. Exactly. So if one of them gets red bar and one doesn't, that person will very likely win. Okay, that's actually oh, really act good health yeah, for Tricky. Really that's good. like fantastic. <laughs> and <laughs> what a, unfortunately, what, Keys are on did not get red bar, but Tricky could die the champion now if he goes in on this Yeah, goal. but he can just heal and win now, yeah? Uh, it'll be close. 
If he heals, it would be really close. I will... I'll probably save and not heal. Okay. That makes sense. I, I mean, you're not losing again. to me, so you might as well just go for it. All right. <laughs> I mean, I could not. I could do no save. I do have to elixir, though. I mean, no save would be our, exciting. Or ether, rather. Do you want to just keep the end game time up? Or yeah, yeah that works. Fine. So we'll all sure. have it. All right. What is sure. this? Is it like a 155? That four or five. Good. Yeah, it looks like I have the time I don't know. to I have save. no idea what my time was. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. It seems like a four or a five. Yeah, I also take my range again. I'm going to be really fame, sad. So probably I think, a five. Oh, okay. it was, uh, Where was that the first time? Oh, wow. So This might be a wait, 154. 28? Yeah, well, that might be a four, yeah. for a race. Yeah, that <laughs> might be a race record or something. <laughs> that, that was it's really either my run. first or second best race time, but race strats are so different. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Gunner's finding his way to Bruno. I'm doing just fine. Is there a chance that Audish will find a, uh, a use against these Onyxes now? I don't know if he's ready. <laughs> okay, so going into, the, so yeah, going into go. the champion fight, my HP hmm. is actually a little bit lower than I'd like, so I'm going to be using the X speed before the X accuracy to boost my defense to make hmm. it more likely that I live. Yeah, so again, this is extremely close, but Tricky does have red bar, so. Yeah. So if I don't die, I should. Yeah, he should. If he doesn't cool die, ahead. he wins. I should. But it's far more likely that he dies, so we'll see what happens. All right, this is going to be the moment nothing, of truth nothing, here, nothing. really. Oh, Mirror goodness. move, that's best case scenario there. No, and sure. that's yep. perfect. That's so it. yeah, that should be a wow, win for that's Tricky. that's actually crazy. Yeah, that was extremely <laughs> close, though, up to the last fight. But yeah, that Aerodactyl range that Keyzeron missed, that's very rare that it lives. But he did have pretty bad special. Yeah, that was and really stupid. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> that happens. But red bar saves 13 and a half seconds on champion. Yeah, exactly. So this should be a pretty easy win here for Tricky from this point. Yep. Fun fact, and you don't see it here because we all got the PP up, so we have um, six horn drills. But uh, if you use a move like Earthquake while you're in red bar, you know the animations are on for the final fight, but the uh, the animations are sped up while you're in red bar. So Earthquake is like two seconds instead of four. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, time for Tricky will be coming up here after he defeats the Venusaur and we get the text. And then right after will be Keyser on. And... Time for Tricky. <laughs> and right after the Venusaur faints, and again, we see the uh, A defeated A text. Uh, you know what? I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> this is this is happening. This oh is, boy, this is happening. Oh, oh here's uh, you yeah, get to see the pokey, the pokey flute, flute here. <laughs> yeah, there's one point in the run where you can see it, and the reason he doesn't want to like burn his full restore is obviously he wants it to heal and he use it before the fight. I think <laughs> I but could wipe here. <laughs> oh my goodness, the confused. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it not again. <laughs> oh no! Anyone? Please just snap. Just snap. So I, <laughs> okay. I actually ran simulations for like four different strats for the Ag of the fight, and they're all over 90% to win if you enter at full health and never use a, a potion. But there is that chance. Okay, hopefully we just see a freeze here, and that would make it a lot better. Yeah, crit won't save me. Okay, that's actually that's fine. Snap. You should yeah. snap. Good. Yeah, okay, so this is free from here. Yeah, so then, again, next is Lance, and he really needed to not take much more damage because he has to go into Lance, and you don't have any more full restores, do you? No. Yeah, so he would have. He has to heal with something, and he only has a few super potions, and had he had to use those before Lance, he may have not gotten to a health that would be possible to survive, barring a miss. Yeah, I didn't save either, so... Yeah, exactly. So he would have had to save before Lance and then hope for either Hydro Pump miss or Horn Drill hit on the YOLO Which Horn YOLO Drill. YOLO Drill. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it happens. Sometimes you have to play for that, but it is really scary. Can you hurry up so I can finish? <laughs> <laughs> He's just happy he finally didn't get Mercy killed at the marathon. Are we? <laughs> yeah, this, this is the most successful GDQ I've ever had. I, hope, I didn't actually die. I hope they haven't actually put in time for you yet. That would no, be they great. haven't, because he hasn't finished. Yeah. I'm waiting for you. Yeah, I know. Well, you're waiting until one second, <laughs> one second before. No, I'm no, sure. no. We'll time it. We'll time Are we going to press our A's together? We'll, we'll, we'll press our A's together. We'll get third place together if he, as a if, team. Uh, if he cheats, then you have to retire from speedrunning, and there's a lot of people who would want to would see that. Would you do that to me? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, would you do that to me? 
<laughs> I wouldn't ask that. <laughs> I mean, I've banned one of your runs before, so. Oh, man. So, yeah, once again, the Lance fight. And luckily, he didn't have to burn any of his healing items, so this shouldn't be too too bad. Uh, again, just no critical. Oh, I think we all know what's going to happen. Yeah. So you probably noticed that none of us healed to full health before Lance, and the reason for that is because we know Gyarados' damage range pretty well. A critical Hydro Pump will kill us no matter whether we have full health or not, and we want to have that low <laughs> HP for Red Bar. Pikachu believes in you. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, he wants it. This is the last chance for Gen 1 miss, and we didn't see one the entire race. Should I press it? So Gunner's oh, HP is a little not. bit lower than you would like, because even with the defensive badge boost, he's not going to survive a wing attack, and Pidgeot has two chances for it. Uh, and it looks like he's right on the border of maybe being able to potion and stay in red bar. I don't have any potions. Uh, yeah, if he, he doesn't have out. any potions, then he has no choice. Yeah, he just has nope. to kind of take it. Yep. Also, I'm... I am missing Venusaur's XP, yeah, but it should be fine. But Pidgeot yeah. is very likely to not do any oh. damage. Uh, Mirror Move and Whirlwind both do nothing. And then on the second turn, Sky Attack does nothing because he won't get the second turn. Yeah, it's really uh, this first turn that matters. But again, Wing Attack on the second turn would still kill. But it's only 25% chance he dies on the first turn. I guess I'm turn. speeding anyway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine, because you have, you have drills. Yeah, that is. All, the only thing that matters is no. that you don't uh, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> is that Double you don't Lance. Die. Lance has quite a speech, and not, you know, it's talking not, to him not, twice Not as bad point. as Brock's, but still really bad. Okay, so I guess we just, you know, last healing All item. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the final save. And champion time. So this is the riskiest champion out of everyone we saw. I swear, if you mash too fast at the end. No, we're gonna we're gonna use we're gonna do it together, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, so here it comes. It's for the Oddish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the Oddish. So yeah, it's all about these first two turns, and uh, he decided to heal, so it's fairly safe, but. You know, it could go poorly. So Critical might be okay here, because he'll live. But as long as he doesn't get wing attack, of oh. course. Dude. Oh. <laughs> Oddish. Oddish. <laughs> What's great is the Oddish would come in and immediately die. Set up. I he got, has good AI. No, no, I got this. Sweep with absorb. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you get sky attack, you can paralyze it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so this trainer has good AI, and there's a 50% so chance I'm it gonna uses sky attack, and he could get a paralyze off on but it. But then what if he, like, chains into fully par I guess I could just swap out. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, fully paralyzed <laughs> is good. It's not like he dodges you with sky attack, so it's not like with fly getting fully paralyzed. This would be amazing. <laughs> yeah! Yes! yes. Yeah. Please hey, don't hit. miss! Don't miss! Oh. No! Oh. He wasn't ready! <laughs> he trained so hard for this moment! <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, okay. man. Is okay. it gonna happen again? <laughs> okay, just one it's more wing so attack. so unlikely <laughs> to wing die attack? from here. Can we get red bar? No. Okay. okay. I, I saw the W. I, know, I, saw, I, saw, I saw the W. All right. So he's guaranteed to win from here. He just mashes A and it's over. A but moment of silence for the Oddishes. Poor Oddish. <laughs> he so tried who has a so shorter hard. Hall of Fame sequence? He does. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, they both do. Or I guess no, there's no he has cries. Of Paris. There's no cries, though. They don't have the, the cries count. Wait, do cries count yeah. toward in game time yeah. in the end? Yeah. yeah. What? Okay, never mind. So by doing this, I'm like voluntarily becoming fourth in the end. <laughs> <laughs> you will have the higher in game because he's been resetting and you've been sitting here. Yeah, I'm going to look awful. <laughs> <laughs> the real question is, does Gunner cheat and make keys on retire? No, what not? if we press each other's controller? I yeah. mean, sure. That'd yeah. be adorable. Yeah. I'm actually, okay, so it's XP. You have one more. You have one more. Oh, there's another one? What? Yeah, there's I one. thought that was the Venusaur. <laughs> you forgot that Oddish fought it earlier, right, so it's like yeah. your Nido King wasn't ready. 
Should we stand up and do this too? Should we stand up? Let's, let's, All right, let's stand oh. up. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Three, two, one, go. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, whoa. You probably bumped your oh, cart yeah, while you yeah. stood up, but it's fine. He already finished. Yeah, that was like a 202 in game, maybe. Good race, man. That was fun. It was good. <laughs> I want to see my end game time. It's probably like a 205. It's probably like 203 something. Hey, Xarion, let's go to credits. You guys got time this together? Uh, all right, ready? Oh, whatever. Exarion yeah. is a known speedrunner. He'll just take the win. It's fine. He's like, I'm there first. <laughs> all right, let's give another hand to all the great racers. Congrats, Exarion, for the win. And I don't know that we've ever had a dead tie for third in a race. Wow, that's really weird. All right, so coming up next, we reached the incentive for that Pokemon Blue Reverse Badges run by Etiquette. So that's coming up. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Also, we are well on our way to meeting the donation incentive for the Tazbot versus Mitch Flower Power race. We have less than $4,000 to go, so make sure to get your donations in for that if, uh, if you want to see that, which you should. It's going to be amazing. So, um, I do have a $1,469.69 donation from the Baca Brigade 201, who says, Tuturu, greetings from the Baca Brigade. This donation comes from Cherno TV's super nice community. Best of luck to all the remaining runners. Wow, SGDQ, great event. Keep it up. Proud of you. Put this towards naming Cyan and Final Fantasy VI Cherno. We have $151 from Big D207. Pokemon has always been one of my favorite games, and I hope to have time soon to learn how to speedrun it. Here's $1 for each original Pokemon to go towards any runner's choice. We got $50 from Yoshimon1. This Pokemon race is amazing. Great runners, great commentary, and great color palettes. I bought three plus one games during the last Steam sale, so let's put the money I saved towards the Tazbot One Controller Three Games bonus race. We've got $100 from Jacob Florell. Hey, SGDQ, it's been a great week. Thank you for the runs, puns, and a good time. We've got $30 from Bears, Bears, Bears. This is the third GDQ event I've seen live, and I just had to donate during this race. Pokemon Blue was the first game I played with my brothers, and now we watch speedruns together, too. Good luck to the runners, and put this all towards killing the animals. We've got $50 from Steven S. Spent countless hours as a kid playing Pokemon Blue when it first came out. I think it's awesome that 20 years later, people are still passionate about the original games. Good luck to all the runners, and thanks for lending your skill to raise money for such a good cause. We've got $50 from Anonymous. I can't believe I'm putting off going out and playing Pokemon Go, but I just have to watch this Pokemon Red run. Best of luck to all the remaining runners. We've got $100 from Emosaru177. AGDQ and SGDQ are always highlights of my year, and it's time for this year's donation. I always wish I could send more to this great cause, but the important thing is that we all do what we can. Loving the runs this year, including this Pokemon Red run. In the spirit of responsible Pokemon training, save those animals. All right, and now I'm going to throw it over to the interview desk uh, where Fiesel has an interview coming up. Hello. Uh, there you go. Hi, everybody. I'm Fiesel. I'm here with uh, two of the guys from the Task Block. We've got Link Sevens and Dwango AC. Hey, everyone. Yep. Hello. Thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, so first of all, tell me what is a TAS for people who don't know. A uh, TAS is a tool-assisted speed run. So uh, basically, what we get to do is we start from power on time, which is actually different from every, what everyone's used to with their RTA runs, and uh, we start 
it doing our inputs, and it's deterministic. So we can play the game essentially frame by frame and look at memory and do what we want and try to complete the game as fast as possible, if, like say if you were a superhuman, maybe. Right, and, and of course we're doing this inside of an emulator, so uh, we are, we're able to fully control everything about the environment. Where we take it an extra step is at GDQ events where we do the same thing but with real hardware, and that's where TaskBot comes in. Uh, although the first run we're doing, uh, actually we'll be doing it in the emulator to show off memory addresses. So it's actually uh, Link 7's run. Yeah, that's the, the run I worked on. So. Yeah, so we'll be doing Super Mario Land 2 in an emulator to show certain addresses and show some of the techniques of how we've done some of this. Okay. Uh, and so TaskBot, that's basically a bot for playing back these tasks on actual hardware. Right. And would you say that TaskBot has really changed the way people do tasking? Do they, uh, is it hardware verification changing the way tasters work now? Uh, somewhat. I mean, certainly TaskBot's become somewhat of a mascot or a, a, a kind of a, a character that's been associated with, with tasking on real hardware, but uh, there's plenty of other people that don't have a physical Rob robot with a bunch of Legos and a custom replay board. Um, but TaskBot is, is definitely more special this year than last. He has custom hardware built specifically for him, a board called the TaskLink board made by Micro500. More info at TaskLink.org. Uh, it's custom built just for a certain run we're doing later today. Well, so this is a big collaborative effort. There's a lot of people who not only work on these tasks, but also the hardware aspect of it to make uh, a demonstration like this happen. How many people do you think were involved in this total? Oh, wow. Just a ballpark um, figure. Oh man, over a dozen. dozen? Over a dozen. Yeah, or, or more, like or more, two dozen. Probably. There's more behind yeah. the scenes. Uh, we have, uh, and, and people came in at the last minute to do even more. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's, right. it's, so it's quite a big a few effort. Behind the scenes. And for certainly sure. for AGDQ 2015, when we did Pokemon Play Switch, we figured we literally put a man year of effort into it for somebody uh, doing something for the Python scripting, for somebody make, building the hardware, someone building the, uh, the, the reset switch. Everything had some component of a team effort. So I am the main presenter of TaskBot. I'm mm -hmm. the main organizer of the event. But there's no way I could do it without all the work of everyone behind the scenes. Well, so suffice it to say, it's probably the biggest collaborative effort of anything that goes on in this, in this marathon. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can easily point to hundreds of hours that have gone into what you're going to see today. Okay. And um, let's, how do you, uh, do you try to top your previous performance? I mean, how do you compete with some of the stuff you've done in the past? How do you keep finding <laughs> well, new things to do? Well, there's a certain point where we won't be able to. Like, I, I don't know how you could... I didn't know how we were going to top... Pokemon Place Twitch. Sure. That was just so over the top. And we were able to do some really cool things with the Super Mario Brothers 3 Total Control. And I thought the uh, Mario Maker was a really nifty thing. But how do we top that? I, I, think we've, uh, I think we've definitely met our bar for quality. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. OK, yeah, you got some surprises coming up? We have a couple of surprises. Yeah, yeah. Even surprises to the task community. Oh, cool. Well, we look forward to that. Yeah. Um, well, it looks like they're uh, getting set up over there for Pokemon Blue and... One other thing, please, we have a TaskBot t-shirt available at oh, the right. Yeti. You really need to check that out. TaskBot uh, t-shirt, $3 goes to Doctors Without Borders. Please check that out. Great. Thanks, Fiesel. Yeah, well, thanks. thank you very much, and good luck getting set up for your task block. Thanks. All right, we're going to throw it over to the Pokemon guys. Looks like they're ready over there. Thanks very much for talking with me. Thanks so much, Fiesel. And if you have never watched Task Block before, you need to watch that. It's an amazing block, and you always see some things that you don't expect. 